Give it. Alex, the intern, has returned. Alex, step out here. Put your head in there. There he is. Alex is back, so all is well. What a show we've got for you. A great podcast because this guy right here, James, is here to talk about speed jigging, slow pitching, stuff that people may not know that much about and they're eager to learn. James, I've already Thanks had I've on. already had some great <laughs> times with you here. Yeah. You know, we've been making fun of Alex together. Yeah. That's one of my favorite pastimes. <laughs> I've missed him so much. But no, you and I have been talking and I can tell you're a really good person. So that's number one in my book. <laughs> and then the vast knowledge that you have on slow pitching and speed jigging, we're going to tap your brain and we're going to let all the Friedman Adventures family members ask you questions. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds great. All right. I'm going to thank a couple sponsors. Yes. Sir. And then I'm going to get into some current fishing information. And I think we'll be able to segue right mm -hmm. into some stuff. But let me thank Opsin USA. Of course, we love Opsin Fluorocarbon. OpsinUSA.com. Put in F.A. at checkout, and Greg Brown, his little fingers are bleeding, he writes so many notes. He'll send you a personal note as well as a free gift. I hope he's still sending free gifts. If not, Greg, come up with something. 22nd Street Landing in beautiful San Pedro, California, where we find ourselves tonight, and it's gorgeous, isn't it? Yes. And we nice. watched, I think you came just after, the Pride. Pride. Yeah. That's part of what we're going to talk about. Six white sea bass per rod on a two-day trip, limited out, wonderful fishing. It's really cool to see that, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. Have you caught sea bass, a lot of sea bass? I've only caught a few. I know. They're, yeah. they're the ghosts, hard, right? Hard to catch. They're hard to catch. <laughs> so that's great stuff. Ventura Sport Fishing, my good friend Tucker McCombs up there, does such a great job on board the Endeavor. And, of course, Cody over there on the Island Spirit. you got to get up there and fish with those guys. Cody is catching... Good rock fish along the beach on the island spirit, and then going out and catching barracuda out at the island. So really good stuff going on up there. That's 805-676-3474. Big fish bait and tackle on the corner of Seal Beach Boulevard and Pacific Coast Highway. All your surf fishing needs and much more. Island fishing tackle. Sam De La Torre. Do you know Sam? Uh, no, but I've been to his store. It's a great store. Yes. And Sam good. is a great guy. Yes, he You is. know why? Because he paid me to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he pays me all the time. No, Sam is a great guy. In yeah. fact, I'm working with Sam. We have all this stuff donated for Mexico. And we're trying to come up with a plan. And we may go to Cedros Island and donate it all out there for a great day. So awesome. looking forward to that. Alex, it's great to have you back making noises in the background. We really appreciate the distraction. <laughs> Fish Taco Chronicle Magazine. Do we have one over there somewhere? Alex, look around. If not, go into the front and get me one, please. Sean Arnold will kill me if I don't show Fish Taco Chronicle <laughs> magazine. Daiwa. I mean, we're, yeah. we're going to get into needing heavy tackle on some of this bluefin tuna. Daiwa puts out some great product, right? Yes, and you can do. mention anything you want, but yep. you like their stuff? Yep, they do. So what would you suggest for like 150-pound tuna? We're looking at the Saltiga 55 with lever go. drag or the Saltiga 60. Yeah, those are the two very good choices. Okay, and I'm, a friend of mine just got off the Spirit of Adventure, and he said this exact same thing. Yeah. So we'll get into that in a moment. Also, the Malahini out of H&M Landing. Boy, how many sponsors do we have? <laughs> I ought to be a rich guy by now, huh? Right. Hopefully somebody starts paying me one of these days. Malahini down there at H&M Landing in beautiful San Diego, California. We'll be, thank you very much, Alex. We'll be on board the Malahini on July the 22nd, and I can't wait for that trip. That's going to be a lot of fun. Always fun fishing with Bill Wilkerson. Looking forward to that. All right, everybody. Let me give you a little fishing information really quick here. Anthony Amalfitano, he fishes with us all the time. He's a big part of the Freedman Adventure family. He had three white sea bass on the Sea Biscuit, a 35-pounder, Credits Opsin Fluorocarbon. I'm not making this up, right? There, yeah. I mean, he That's told me that, yeah. right? <laughs> hey, make sure you say Opsin. You know? <laughs> Greg, Greg likes that. I didn't say anything, honestly. So that is awesome. We're really happy. Anthony's a great guy. He's been dying to get a sea bass. He's been on some Friedman Adventures trips this year, and we have been unable to make that happen, but he made it happen, and I am stoked about that. The Pride, as we mentioned, just getting back in, they went all the way up to the Channel Islands. Six white sea bass per rod. Fantastic fishing. Doesn't get much better, does it? No. No. I'll tell you. And on the way back, ladies and gentlemen, some breaking news. Alex, can you make breaking news noise? You know how to do that? Oh, that's great. All right. Uh, on the way back, they ran into some blue fan tuna 
between the west end of Catalina and Santa Barbara Island. That bluefin is all over the place. You're going to find out more about that in a moment. I do want to take some time and just talk to you. And I'm getting to James, and there's a lot, there's a lot of questions up there, James, so we're going to get into it. He's the main focus of tonight. I just want to get you caught up. Aaron just walked by from the Native Sun. He was at Catalina Island. He's, he'll be running out of here tomorrow morning. Lots of bass, bonita, barracuda. Seeing yellows over there, really looking good at Cat. Water temps are up. My good friend, Matt Schlur, great guy. He was a police officer. He's been a friend of mine for 50-something years. So we've been, uh, we've been around. He was like 14 years old, and I talked his parents into letting him go on a commercial boat with us. So I was running a boat out of Redondo called the Thunderfish. We're going to Tanner Bank. He's 14. I, you know, hey, you know, everything's under control. Don't worry. We've got this. Got life jackets. And, you know, I don't even, I, I wasn't even sure if we did. No, I, <laughs> I, of course I wouldn't do that. And so we get out to Rocky Point. We're going to Tanner Bank. Mm -hmm. And he looks at me and I go, hey, come over here. Sit here. Okay. And I go, see this? You want to keep this on a 195 course. You see how you do that? You turn and keep it 195. Wake me in four hours. Good luck. Seriously. I went to bed. Because you're burned out. So that was magic. Anyway, Matt was on the spirit of adventure. He said that Evan Kraft, the captain, is as good as it gets. Said he was a great guy. So get this. He takes his two kids out there, and they have phenomenal fishing. First of all, Ryan, one of his sons, has three bluefin tuna over 100 pounds. Brad, his other son, had two between 180 and 200 pounds. I mean, fishing with your kids, you don't have any kids yet. Nope. But one of these days, you better say hi to your wife. Hi. <laughs> don't you want to mention her by name and say, yeah. say something like, I love I, I you, know, I, I, I love you, sweetheart, and I, I miss you. And, and I know she's um, listening in, so I just want to say hi, and I just love you. So, yep. Now that's what <laughs> I like to hear. All right, so uh, fishing with your kids is great. Now, Matt said that knife jigs, it was windy, there was a lot of current where they were fishing. I'm not going to mention exactly where they were fishing, but uh, he said four to 500 gram knife jigs really were important. We're going to get into all this later. Color, he said, was not important. We're going to ask James about that later. And he said that having like a Daiwa 55 lever drag type was essential because Evan Kraft, the captain, he said, guys, these schools don't we, we got to find one that bites. So it's a numbers game. We hit this school. We hit this yeah. school. We find one that wants to bite. The yeah. best school they had only bit for an hour, but they were hanging fish. If you have a guy with tackle that's not up to par, you're on a fish for an hour and a half, and you're yeah. losing valuable time, correct? Yes, you are. Yeah. yeah. So he made that point, and that's why we are happy that Daiwa is our sponsor. Daytime, he said, was slow. They did catch a few on the poppers out in that neck of the woods. So... Really, really good stuff. And finally, if you're a private boater, I have some inside info for you. Not kidding, either. Around the 43 Fathom area, the kelps there are holding flatheads. There's quite a bit of flatheads in there, so a lot of Dorado have moved in there and some kelp had a yellowtail. That fish is moving up. We have this big super moon tomorrow night. And while the science may be lacking, the empirical evidence is that Big bodies of fish like to move on the full moon. Here come the albacore, everybody. Uh, big bodies of fish like to move. So we might see that Dorado move up. We might see more of that yellowtail. We're definitely getting that warm water influence. And we're hoping that on July the 22nd on the Malahini, we'll be able to catch some fish. All right. Hey, I am really sorry to take up so much of your valuable time because, James, I really appreciate you being here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me on. Oh, and my pleasure. Me. My yeah. pleasure. Let me just look up here and see uh, if there's anything I can uh, read to you. Travis says, go time, James. Save me a 350 HD. <laughs> Jeff's, hey, they're, they're getting out of control. You got to back it up again. This is the one thing you do around here. <laughs> All right, perfect. Uh, Jeff says, hello, Phil and James. Jeff Yeomans, we love you. Jason Lawler, who does all the cooking. I told you about Jason, right? Yes. What a super good guy he is. Yes. Uh, he's here. Dave Thompson, he's saying hello. Daniel, hello. All these folks are saying hi. If anybody out there wants to ask a question of James, please do. Dave Thompson, where are the albacore uh, <laughs> at uh, Schaub's in Long Beach? Jason has it. It's delicious. It's seared and uh, quite tasty, Dave. I think you'll really enjoy it. All right, James. Yes, sir. Let's just start with slow pitching. Okay, yep. people hear that. 
Yeah. And they're like, what is it? Yeah. What is slow pitching? Is it the methodology we're referring to? Yeah. So it's the technique. Yeah. And it's uh, basically its own system where um, you're using a really uh, parabolic rod. That yeah. Parabolic means. Yeah. It, yes. It yeah. bends, right? That it bends. Yeah. And then um, that helps um, the jigs give its, you know, motion. Uh huh. So whether it's going to be a slow falling jig or a flutter style, a sliding type of jig, there's a variety of jigs, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of them out there. So, so Gary Kwan, he gave me some stuff to try at once. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, Phil, slow. Yep. Slow. It's called slow pitching yeah. for a reason. Yeah. Is, is that true? Yes. Because okay. you're working the jigs really slowly. So you're going to, there's several techniques where you could just, uh, do a lift and fall technique and then or else you're slowly working that water column yeah and then fish go crazy they they bite they bite really well do they yes they do and a variety of fish a variety of fish really uh, yeah from, from sea bass to rockfish, rockfish to tuna calicos yeah too yeah uh, i've caught blue perch on them oh well, hey now we're talking <laughs> yeah that's my so, favorite they, hey they everybody loves bite. crapper snappers <laughs> right yeah yeah so, it, and so you just barely, and the jig will dart, huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. So the movement, um, depending on the jig, the movement, um, you know, it's like, a, for example, the flat fall. Yeah. If you use that as a slow pitch, it will, as you pull up, it will slowly fall down, you know, fall. Yeah. Is the pound mono you're using? Well, first of all, mono or fluorocarbon doesn't make a difference. No, not not. You can go with mono. Yeah, you can yeah. go with mono too. Do, does what pound test you're using make a difference? So usually, um, for our lo for our local waters, right. slow pitch jigging, we usually use thirty to forty pound test. Yes. Yeah, and then um, we'll fish like a thirty or even forty pound uh, top shot, and then um, yeah, and th I brought one into studio to show everyone. Now we're getting and professional we... here. Thank <laughs> God James is here. So. You'll notice that the rod is very thin, and then I'm using a, a short, uh, I mean, not short, a uh, narrow, compact uh, reel. This one happens to be a Daiwa Saltiga 35 narrow, and um, it's the one I, I use when we're fishing a little bit deeper, and maybe if there's like some game fish around, yellowtails, white sea bass, but um, that's one of my go-to um, setups there. So you drop the jig down. Mm -hmm. Do you get bit on the sink? Uh, yeah, a lot of times so you, you gotta get, pay attention when yeah. you're dropping it, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, because when you're mm -hmm. when you're working the the jig, literally you'll get a lot of your bites as the jig is um, coming back down. Right. Yeah. Right. And yeah. then you put it in gear and wind on it. Yep. Yeah. Just wind on it. Yeah. yeah. And so, assuming you don't get a bite on the mm -hmm. way down, you let it hit bottom. Uh, yeah, you just work work the columns. Sometimes uh -huh. try different uh, retrieval speeds or different like short short pumps and things like that to just give, give it a different action. Yeah. 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 I mean, the, the, the thing that's so interesting about this to me is, you know, at my age, I kind of been there, done it. Yeah. I haven't been there and done this. <laughs> so it's something new and it's, it's kind of exciting. It's not new. It's been around for a well, long time. Well, that's true. Yeah. yeah. And in fact, our dear friend, um, uh, who's our dear friend? Help me. <laughs> the guy that introduced this was Shimano. Oh, yeah, uh, Brian. Yeah, Brian. Yeah, Brian. Sorry, Brian. <laughs> yeah, I'm an old man. Give me a break. Brian, yeah, Brian, right? Brian Didn't they kind of um, try to introduce this? Like yeah, they introduced the, the butterfly jigging um, system. So that one's more of a speed jigging type of um, fishing. So that's something that um, they introduced, I think, was it maybe 16, 17 years ago? Yeah, right. Like yeah. So it's kind of, it, people weren't ready for it, obviously. Right, right. And now they're ready for it. Right. Yeah. So now, now you know you you have slow pitching and you have speed jigging as, as an option or you know in, in your arsenal to to catch fish. Let me read you a couple comments. Okay. I have my Saltiga sixty. I call it Excalibur. Jason Lawler, David Maestro. You know David. Yes, I do. Super good guy, David. Yeah. Look for your photo up there tonight. Put it <laughs> up there. Uh, those West Coast jiggers are fire on fire. And the fellows use them all the time, putting a couple of speed jigging setups together for a change of pace. So, yeah, yeah your stuff, you mentioned your stuff, you know, oh, yeah. you're, you're making these um, lures now, right? You can show them. Yeah, so and, you well, know. one of the popular lures for the past uh, three years 
um, that, that I've been using and selling now are these um, knife jigs. This one has been a tremendous, and uh, it's been catching a lot of bluefin over the past three years. And yeah, it's just been amazing how well the bluefin bites. How many grams is that? Uh, this one right here is a 250 gram. Yeah. So the ones that, that I have available are from 150. Um, they, they come in 150, 200, 250, 300. And I've started to make a few of the 400. Now. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, yeah so because heavier. Matt, the guy on the Spirit of Adventure, he said to keep it straight up and down in this yeah. wind and current, yeah. they needed a 400. So right. he said, and I'm just asking you, he mm -hmm. said color is irrelevant. He doesn't think it makes a difference in the world. What do you I'm say? I'm on the same boat. Really? Too, where, um, Could you paint it black and get a bite? Actually, think? I've fished the black jig. There you go. Yeah. And yeah. then that... That has gotten bit bit up really well too. Really, so it and that's at night too. Yeah. So right. Yeah. To me, color doesn't really matter. Um, I know some of the popular colors though, like the Katy Perry's, they get bit really well. Uh, pink silver, uh, purple silver, and you know it's a lot of its preference. But I mean, they they get bit. Okay, but yeah. you you feel like color is irrelevant. No. It's like um, my college professor Pete Hoffman. He loved to fish also. And he'd say, you know when those guys say on a barracuda bite, they're biting the blue and white. you got to have the blue and white. You know why they're saying that? Because everybody's fishing Everybody. the blue and white. <laughs> if they were fishing the purple and green and pink, right. they'd be saying that. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know right. how people feel about that. You can make a comment. But I know that you and Gary Kwan from Taddy Lures, he says pretty much. Yeah. Now, he doesn't think color me. You know, sometimes those jigs are painted for the angler. Right. You walk into right. a tackle center and you go, oh, that thing was going to get bit. Look at that yeah. thing. It's beautiful. I've, I've also seen um, there's jigs that don't have glow that get bit and, and during the night. So, I mean, yeah, yeah it, glow, it, glow doesn't even really matter too. But. Yeah. And I, what I like also is you're, you're talking about kind of experimenting, trying different yeah. stuff. Yeah. You know, and so I love all that. Tim P says, how many hooks on a knife jig? Fishing for bluefin tuna. The answer, please. A lot of it's preference. I, I like to fish one assist hook on top and one assist hook on bottom. Some of the captains and crew like um, just like twins at the bottom because if you foul hook a, a big fish, it's going to it's gonna be hard work. Yes. A lot of work to try to get that one in. Right. And I've had that experience last year on the Pacific Queen where... We foul hooked uh, maybe a hundred and forty pounder, but that thing took an hour and forty five minutes to land, and it was not fun because yeah. we went through at least four or five anglers trying to. Oh my god, <laughs> it was a tough fish. It was a yeah. tough fish. Yeah, no yeah. question. David Maestro says, "What knots are you tying on those knife jigs? Chain knots?" Question mark. Yes. So, um, my brother and I, and even like um, our group, uh, Gary Daiwa Warrior, we. We all use um, the chain knot. It's um, pretty, pretty, pretty easy knot to tie. There's a bunch of videos out there on on it. Yeah. And um, go to YouTube. I, yeah. And probably search it. Yep, yeah. Yep. And you'll you'll be able to find it. Um, but it's that knot acts like a, a spring. So when you're jigging on impact, uh, you have that shock absorb. And if a bluefin has teeth, I mean, you know, it does have teeth. If it gets on there. Yeah, if it gets yeah. on there, it's going to take a while because it's a very um, thick knot. So yeah. chain knot is the answer. Chain knot, but you could also just do a normal San Diego. It, it works just but fine. But it sounds like you prefer the chain or not. Yeah, yeah. chain knot's fine. All right. Jason Lawler, I have the 35 and the 15 Saltiga for SPG. Is, are those good reels for yes, that? Those are the same two I have as well. Really? Yeah. Jason, you're <laughs> on it, man. Brandon, Tim, I've seen people have eight hooks on the knife jig. Think Jeff on the Thunderbird had it set up that way. Uh, that's crazy, isn't it? That's a few too many, yeah. Hey, there's Brian. I hope oh, Brian hi. just tuned in so he didn't see me forget his name a second ago. Brian, I'm sorry. I'm old, okay? James has done what major tackle manufacturers couldn't in bringing prominence to the jigging technique and awareness and how to put gear together so anglers understand the what, the how, and the why. Boy, you are really getting uh, 
you have our attention. <laughs> I agree, Brian, definitely. So you have brought it. How, how did you, how did this become your life's quest? Uh, you know, I, yeah, what, I mean, this slow pitching, and, and uh, I'm not sure about speed jigging, you tell me, mm -hmm. did this all originate in Japan? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Everything's, um, those techniques were originated in Japan, and eventually it got bigger and it grew amongst, like, the, the world, really. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And then, so how did you get interested in it? Um, were you paying attention to that? Yeah, because I've always had an interest in fishing jigs. Yeah. I don't like to fish the live bait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know yeah. what you mean. Yeah. I know what so you mean. So I've always had that um, where swim bait fishing for calicos or um, sand bass, things like that. I always like to fish a jig instead of live bait. Yeah, I understand. And um, yeah, um, it's, it's, it's um, been, I know in the beginning it was very difficult to find jigs that there weren't many out on the market. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to like research online. That was what, 2016, 2016, where, you know, if you wanted a, a jig like from Japan, you would have to, you know, order online and get it shipped over. And, right. You know, it, it's, it got really expensive. But um, now nowadays there's so many jigs available and a lot of there, there's a lot out on the market now and it's it's amazing to see and it's uh it gives a anglers a lot of um variety to to use and yeah yeah excellent yeah. is there anything about the japanese fishery you know the stuff they're fishing that made it perfect for this type of yeah because they, their their fishing is more um artificial so it's going to be um popper stick baits uh, jigs a variety and, of, and it's artificial because of a lack of live yeah, bait yeah probably yeah. Yeah, yeah okay like everywhere else right, right. besides yeah southern gallum or you know <laughs> right i mean they're, they're the guys that perfected yeah. that yeah. yeah these bait businesses i mean those guys up all night long you look at how many boats go to the san diego bait receiver and you got to take your hat off yeah. to that operation yeah. it's phenomenal yeah right yeah yeah so so you think that lack of bait and so they're saying hey we still want to catch fish yeah. right yep and they did that. So you were watching that, and then you said, we can bring that to Southern California. Is that your thought process? That's one of the things that I did was um, on my trips to Southeast Asia, everywhere I go, I like to, everywhere I like to travel to, I like to stop by and make a, stop by fishing tackle shops. In, yeah. In wherever I go. Why not, yeah, right? That's yeah. really cool. Yeah, so on my trips, I'll just buy what I think might work and, and, get, and just give it a try here. Yeah. And then... Um, I went into some crazy tackle stores in China. And, you know, oh, yeah. Like, oh, my God. What the hell is that? Yeah. You know, it looks like a Christmas I'm tree. I'm sure they have tons and tons oh, of Oh, some really cool stuff. Options. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Uh, Jason Lawler, I have a problem getting the line wrapped on the tip of the rod every so often. Am I dropping my tip too fast? Or what would you suggest? Yeah. Is that a common problem? That That, that is. That yeah. is. So... Uh, well, one of the things is, yeah, you're, you are dropping the rod down too quickly. But um, another way is if you fish a, uh, I don't have a, a acid wrap rod or a spiral wrap rod. Yeah. Where, you know, it's, it looks something, uh, you can't see it, uh, but. You might be able to see it. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Let's see. Yeah. There you go. So the tip will be facing um, down. Right. Yeah. So you'll get for sure less. Um, tip wraps on that for sure. Acid wrapped, important wrap. or not important? Um, Do you recommend that when you're slow pitching, you have an acid wrap? I, I, I think it, there, there's a lot of benefits to it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, you know, you, the the whole jigging part of you know not getting your um, tip wrapped, as well as when you're fighting a fish, um, you don't get that side to side torque, so everything's well balanced and yeah. James, and by the way, David Maestro's up there saying, we see it clearly with these oh, yeah. expensive Freeman Adventures <laughs> cameras, of course. Right, awesome. you know, they're going to ca capture everything. <laughs> and David Maestro says, don't forget to hit the like button, Freeman Adventure family. Hey, I'd really appreciate it if you got that like button up to 50. ASAP, everybody. Really helps us a lot. We really appreciate it. All right. Martin says, uh, for Bluefin, what brand assist cord do you recommend? And do you use wire inside the assist cord? Oh, okay, okay. So um, there's a variety of uh, assist cord available. Yeah. Um, I like to use 
Xylon. Xylon is one of my favorite ones because it's has it's very abra uh, abrasion resistant. Yeah, and that's super important. Yeah. Yeah. Xylon. So Xylon, uh, very Voss makes uh, some good assist line as well. Um, it's the SS assist line. Uh huh. That's one of our go tos as well. But um, there's also different t types of Kevlar where they're infused with uh, fluorocarbon, uh, metal metal wire. All those. It's yeah. It's just kind of a uh, Personal preference, Personal, yeah. but if you had to recommend, what would you say? I would say, I, I would say probably the cis line or just um, the 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 Zylon. Zylon is the good stuff. Right. Yeah. All right. So I fished yo-yo iron. You know, I've done all of that. Slow pitching is entirely different. You get your jig down, and then can you show like how do you how do you pull up uh, how do you? Yeah. I mean, is how slow is it or, or how? Is it just really a minor bump, like, and the jig will react, like, in the way that you want it to? Um, so... If you need Alex to act like a fish, he's really good at <laughs> no. that. No, I'm just kidding, Alex. So, Sit down. We don't need you on the show right now. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, basically, you're, you're looking at, like, um, a, you're lifting. Yeah. And then you just... And you're winding? And, and let it drop, yeah. So, there, there, there's, like, a, a rhythm to it. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's um, if if you guys are interested, there's a lot of um, videos and tutorials. Do you have anything out there? I don't have anything. Oh, out well, there. you and I are going to do some. OK. Yeah. All right. right? Yeah, yeah. That'll be fun. Okay. Yeah, be definitely. Fun. We'll, we'll start doing that. There, but in the meantime, people mm -hmm. can search on YouTube, yep, right? Yep. Yeah. There's um, Johnny Jigs. There's Benny Ortiz. If you um, YouTube there. The, and this Daiwa Warrior guy. Gary? <laughs> Gary? Yeah. Gary, I know you're listening. <laughs> I don't see you asking any. Gary, I see you out there. We got to get Gary on the show, yeah, right? Yeah. Daiwa that, Warrior. That guy, that guy has killed a is, lot really? of fish. Yes. Yeah, we definitely He's got really him. good. He's one of the good ones. All right. Yeah. You'll reach out to him for I'll me, right? I'll reach out to him. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, so you're fishing rockfish. You're going to wind up not too far, right? Right. And then you're going to drop back down right. again, right? Right. But sometimes um, with those suspended reds, you know, you could use... That's true. You could, you could use a lighter jig, it, it, depending on the um, current situation. And some rockfish do hang higher in the yep. water column. Yeah. Chili peppers are a good example yep. of that. Yep. And so, yeah, you got to think about all this yeah, stuff, huh? Yeah, you do. You do. That's why, like, um, understanding the, the water conditions, the current, mm. and... Just listening to your captain and letting him know, um, you know, they usually will tell you how deep the fish are. And that brings up the question <laughs> of the different colors on the line. Like, Iser line makes these different colors oh, yeah. so you know the depth. So, that's really important, isn't it? Yeah. To know how, when the captain says, hey, this, this bluefin school is at 180 feet, yeah. then you want to drop down to, let's say, 220, you want to drop down be, below yeah, just it below and them. come yeah. through it, right? Come through it, yeah. 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 So, and you're guessing if you don't have some way to figure this out. Right. You need to know, right? Yeah, you do. It's, it, it, it'll, it'll help to have that for sure. Especially um, for, for me, I like to mark my line up to um, every 100 yards, or I mean every 100 feet. Um, I'll, I'll do a big mark on, on mine. And uh, if I don't have my line marked and I use the multi... Uh, the, the the metered braid yeah yeah so meter braid is i think every 30 meters is is uh changes color every 30 meters so i never thought we would switch to the metric system and now oh. it's the fishing community that you know that we're back. talking meters and and grams and everything. uh every 30 feet it changes color okay yeah. oh right. not meters we're back yeah. to yeah, the, sorry yeah, no problem it's 10 meters <laughs> no problem <laughs> david maestro says i get my assist hooks from mr no those yeah. are great ones. I also use Mustad. Agree or disagree? Yeah. Who's uh, Mr. No? That's uh, my buddy Jason. Um, yeah, he makes um, very good assist hooks. Yeah, he uses um, the VMCs, and those hooks have held up to a lot of the big bluefin. All right, so and is he in tackle stores, or do you have to go to directly to him? Uh, you can reach out to him. He's on Instagram at Jano Custom Rods, and I think he's on Facebook. Facebook as well as under Jason No. Okay, very mm -hmm. good. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure David will put up uh, uh, info on where to find him also. All right, Rick Slater. Fish quality. To bleed, 
no salt brine, just iced or the Japanese wire. Do you have any opinion on that? Uh, in no. in terms of taking care of your fish, so uh, let the... you know Jason Lawler probably tell you all about that, Rick. But um, yeah, I say bleed for sure, uh, and the wire I think is super important down the spine. This guy who caught the largest, I told you about that guy that caught the largest cabazon, yeah. Bruce Kuhn, yeah, because he was playing with his microphone. I told, don't play with your microphone. <laughs> um, so he, I'm I'm gonna say this is. 35 years ago, and he lived in Japan for some time. I didn't realize that. He had that wire oh, thing wow. 35 years ago, and I was a big jerk because I go, no, no, don't do, you know, because I didn't want him bugging the crew. Because one of Tuna would come on, he'd go, hey, let's, and they're, they're busy, and I'm, and I was an idiot because he was way ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. It's so important taking care of your catch. It's yeah, huge, it right? Is, it is. But the the crew are yeah, they're really good, good at that. They're yeah. really good now. Yeah. If you're on the right boat yeah. with a good crew, San Diego boats, the Amigo, yeah. you know, yeah. most of these guys are Enterprise. They take really, yeah. really good care of the fish. And incidentally, not those, but you are seeing some current photos of the Pride just getting in with limits of white sea bass today, six per rod. So you'll see that flash up there. Um, you'll also see my friend Matt Schlurf, who I mentioned, was on board the Spirit of Adventure with his kids. You'll see their big bluefin tuna in addition to that. All right, uh, Jason Lawler, Love, Johnny Jiggs, and Benny Ortiz. Yeah, those are the guys from the East Coast, Florida. Oh, really? And they're yeah. good, huh? They're very good. Excellent. Well, they got a lot of uh, videos, on. They'll, they'll be able to teach you. Oh, perfect. Yep. Yep. So, and that's super. Now, you know what I like about this is that you're just about, like, educating people so that yep. they can experience the same joys that yep. you're obviously yep. experiencing from this, right? Yep. Like, I always, like, enjoy uh, helping people and just... You know, share, sharing sharing the knowledge, you know? Yeah. Every, everyone can, like, I'm a student of the game. I, I continue to just keep learning, and that's something that I enjoy doing. And you know, learning techniques or just tips from other anglers, yes. it, it helps. It helps, you know, any 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 help for to, to catch fish, you know? I'm all, Absolutely. All, all years old. And, and, and I, you know, I hate to say this about the Friedman Adventures family, but that's like the people that are watching our show and now you yeah. and Alex and we're all like into sharing. It's not like, oh, you know, I'm not going to tell you. I don't want you catching, you know. It's <laughs> not, there, of course, there's friendly competition. Yeah. You want to beat the guy next to you at the rail. <laughs> For sure. Right, but I mean, not to the point where you try to sabotage him. Or, right, right, you know, right. So I, I love that. Really, I really, really do. Um, and man, those Mad Max, the, I just want to make a mention that my fan, friend Phil Capriccio, mm -hmm. we gave him a Mad Max. Eddie Leland gave him one. And he was at Clemente, and he caught some yellows fishing around White Rock. And then he said, conditions just went slack and no more bite. Mm -hmm. So he went out, and he trolled for like 20 minutes, and boom, 180-pounder. Boom, 65-pounder. He got four fish on that Mad Mac lure. So those things are red hot right now yeah, on the troll. They are. All right, uh, let's see. Where am I? Uh, I want to make sure I don't skip anybody. Relax with Chris. I use VMC. 11 -0, very sharp. Yep. Agree? Yep. Good hook? Those, those, those are good hooks. All right. Perfect. Slamming Sammy. It's good to see you, my friend. Can you slow pitch on spinning gear? What a great question. They do have those available. They do? Yeah. Uh, they make spinning models. Um, I personally haven't tried it yet, but I know that they're out there, and I've seen... Um, do you, videos. Do you, do you, do you, uh, it sounds like, do you anticipate a, there shouldn't be a problem with that, right? It no, should work no. fine, right? Yeah, it should work fine. Yeah. Yeah. So I've, I've seen a lot of videos in Southeast Asia that they do uh, spin jigging. So You're talking about Southeast Asia, specifically what countries have you fished in and, and what did you witness there? Um, I traveled all through there, so. I've only fished See? in in Thailand, <laughs> but I, I've seen a lot of videos of guys in Malaysia, Singapore, um, Vietnam too. And yeah, James, they, they do. you and I are going to have to go <laughs> do a little Southeast Asia tour, <laughs> right. right? Slow right. pitch all through there. <laughs> right. I'm all for it, man. Once things settle down. All right. Um, Dave Maestro, great bite. They had over 100 white sea bass. Yeah. And you can see them up there. Pride with a great trip. James and I, did you see it, Alex? You weren't here when they came in, right? Yeah. Just a tremendous trip. And a little teaser tomorrow on the morning briefing. I'll have Captain Sean Roberts talking about that incredible bite 
along with some passengers on board. So don't miss that. Sam De La Torre. I love Sam. Sam. Such a great guy. How important is it to match your rods to jig weight? It is important. Great question, yeah. Sam. That, that, that's, that's a great question. And it is important. A lot, a lot of the jigging rods, um, you know, they, they have their own um, rating. Most, I, I would say for slow pitch jigging, the standard sizes, uh, jig, jig weights that they, they can fish are generally like 100 to 250 or 100 to 300. And then um, when you're the whole jigging, speed jigging, um, yeah, there's rods that are rated um, from like 100 to 300 pound, uh, three 300 gram jigs yeah. and 250 to 400. So yeah, they're all rated for a specific, um, you know, jig, I guess yeah. you can say. So it's super important. It is, it yeah. is. Yeah, because for example, if you use a heavy duty jigging rod, like a PEE um, 610 with a 100 gram jig, it, it's not gonna give you that, that right action. You right. might get lucky and get, get a fish to bite on the sink or, you know, but it's not gonna give you that proper action that, yeah. that, you, that you, you would like, so. Makes sense. Yeah. All right, uh, Diego, Luna, Sam's kids, are you watching tonight? <laughs> I'd be very disappointed. Remember what Teacher Phillips says. I was a teacher too, right? Yeah. Teacher Phillips says, before you do your homework, you watch the Friedman Adventures podcast. It will excel you into the upper atmosphere of life. No, do your homework <laughs> first. You don't want to watch a dope like me, for sure. All right. Um, hey, and by the way, I mentioned to you, and you thought I was crazy. Folks, I'm going to make this announcement to you all. I will see Top Gun Maverick tomorrow <laughs> That's it. for the 10th time. I've seen it nine times, and tomorrow my wife wants to see it. I'm all geared up. I've seen it so many times. See, when I go to a movie theater with my wife, I've told you this, yeah. I just look at her ear because <laughs> I've got to freaking translate the movie into Spanish on the fly. But I've seen it nine times, so I've got it wired. So pretty crazy. I like that movie. Yeah, I she's starting so. to think i got a thing for Tom Cruise. So <laughs> she's getting, I think that's why she wants to go to see how I react. All right, um, let's see here. Where are we? Uh, Jeff. James and his group are well known on the Pacific Queen and the San Diego for catching big bluefin tuna. Is that true? Yeah. You like those boats? Yeah. Those God, are yes. Huh? Those are some of my favorite ones. And uh, we've had some epic trips on, on the San Diego and the Pac Queen. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and the crews on both boats. Why don't you talk about, first of all, the Pacific Queen? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Captain Gavin and his crew, they're excellent. They, they are really good. Um, and they get their anglers uh, on fish, and they're just really good people too, so. Yeah, right, yeah. and Booger over there on the San Diego and yeah. his crew, wh Booger, what can you say about them? Booger, Matt, uh, Mike, like just everyone there on Fisher and Andrew, like those guys, they, they take care of everyone, everyone, and um, they make sure everyone um, has a, a good shot at, to, to catch it, and they're really good at, um, Putting, putting their anglers on fish too, so. Right, and, yeah. and more important, I think at least, they're really good about teaching. Yes. So if are. you show up there, they're not like, oh, look at that, you know, yeah. I mean, they're not the kind of guys that get on the radio. There's some guys who get on the radio mm -hmm. and say, ah, we couldn't catch anything because we've got a bunch of dummies on here. Right. Yeah. They're, teach they're, them. Yeah. And those guys, when you walk on the boat and say, I really, that's why I tell these guys, you go on a boat like that, you walk up and you say, the first thing you say is, I've never done this before. Yes. And they're like, let me teach you. Yep. Yep. And that's when you have a good crew. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. As so, soon as they, they're always giving the, the seminars as we're driving out. And um, yeah, they have, they make sure everyone's gathered to, to listen. And I, I still listen in on it. Even yeah, though, why not? You can yeah, always learn I've, something, right? Always, always. Yes. yes. Because... You know, you and I, we're on the beach, and they're out there on the water, so there may be something that yeah. just happened the day before that's yeah. different and that they're keyed in on, yeah. and they're going to help you. They want you to catch yeah. fish. And it's important to listen to, to the captain, and he's going to give you the, the depths that the, you know, the fish are where he's marking, and that's going to put you right in, you know. That's going to get you, get you in the zone, get you yeah. bit. Yep. Yeah, right. I'm going to go through some species with you in a little bit, but we have so many questions, I'm going to keep going with okay. that. 
But I want to, you know, like go from rockfish to tuna to yellowtail to calico bass and, you know, see what, yeah. and then we, we start to talk about speed jigging, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's all we, yeah. It's yeah, all, I know, it's all tied together, yeah, kind of, yeah, but it's yeah. all great stuff. All right, uh, David Maestro, piggybacking on Sam's question, how about reels for speed jigging to match weight-wise? Good question, David, yeah. as always. Yeah, so some of my go-to um, reels, um, I, like, I like for my lighter jigging setups, like when I'm targeting those kelp patty yellows or even slow-pitch jigging for... Um, yellows or just um, white sea bass, things like that. You know, I, I like a 16 narrow size reel. Uh -huh. I, I feel that that's, that's a, a perfect size. And then um, for the bigger game stuff, um, I use a Jigging Master, a brand called Jigging Master in the PE7, PE8s, and those have been able to handle big fish. And um, same thing with the Saltiga 55, that's another big fish reel that that I use. Yes. And yeah, they'll they'll get the job done. Yep. Yeah, and like Matt was saying, I mean, you don't want to be the schmuck who's on a fish for two hours and everybody else is looking at you, right? Right. right. He said those fish that they were catching, like 100, 100 to 200 pounders, mm -hmm. he said with that kind of gear, you can get them in 20 minutes. And yeah. that's, that's what they were doing. So uh, it's super important, right? It is, gear it is. is so important now and it's so good, the yeah. stuff that's out there, right? Yep. Yeah, it's incredible. So Travis says, James has always taken the time to help me and answer my questions. Yeah, what Travis, nice Travis, guy. he's, he's, uh, he's been supportive since day one. And, um, he yeah. did throw in there, however, he cost me a thousand bucks when he talked me into a <laughs> jigging master reel. Yeah, Look, he jumped Travis, on board. He yeah. jumped on board. He did? Yeah. He went all in, huh? All in, yeah. yeah. Why did you talk him into it? Obviously, because you thought it would up his game, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and what is that reel exactly? That one is uh, there's a brand um, from Taiwan called uh -huh. Jiggy Master that's been making. Taiwan, I love Taiwan, but go ahead. Yes. Yeah, they've been making um, these heavy, uh, not heavy, but um, really good jigging reels. They're light in weight. Um, they cost a lot, which you know, but. They they have really good drags on the, on that. I think uh, at full it's eighty pounds of drag. Like there's, I don't think there's too many reels that's that size that that can do that. Yeah, but, yeah. S super good. All right, very good. Uh, David Maestro, John Trophy from Trophy Tackle in New York. John, are you watching tonight from New York? You better. Oh no, he's probably asleep. Right? What time <laughs> is it there? Ten o'clock. Uh, he sent some speed jigging pics of a fellow on spinning gear and 88 inch bluefin on a Zeus. So there you are, right? Yeah. You know, what is it with the stigma about, and you know, I have to be honest with you. I feel weird. Like a friend of mine was on the Pride the other day and he brought a spinning rod and reel mm -hmm. and he was having a little trouble. So I go, here, I'll cast. And I, I feel like I shouldn't feel that way, right? I mean, spinning gear is Darn good. You look at this Daiwa stuff, you can get 40 pounds of drag yes, on some of these. Yes. Which is more, you know, you're going to pulled over if you're fishing 40 right, pounds right. of drag. So, um, I mean, there, what is it? Did you, do you ever fish spinning gear? No, I haven't. Okay, does it bug you? Do you feel like no, it's beneath you? Or? No, because the gear that's available right now yeah. for the big fish, for the spinning reels, they have incredible drags. And I've seen videos of big bluefin being caught on spinning gear and it's it's incredible 400 500 pound bluefin how on incredible gear. is that yeah. that is yeah. awesome yeah. yeah alex i'm gonna let you pick you don't have to do it right now but in the next 15 minutes you're gonna pick somebody who asks a really good question and don't screw it up and then we're gonna get what are we gonna give them uh i brought Several jigs in to give away, but um, yeah. The, the first winner is going to get what? The first winner is going to get a 200 gram and a 250 gram knife jig. So, and James rigged is actually, ready to go. James is going to mail it out. Alex yeah. is going to write down the address since I'm still far behind on my stuff. I'm so ashamed. <laughs> but you're going to, so people will actually get this this yeah. time. So it's great. All right, very good. Chris Pro, hello from Arizona. Oh, we have awesome. people all over the world. Chris, nice. thank you, man. Hope you and your family are doing well. Really appreciate it. It's so nice. We have people from Taiwan who watch. 
My brother lives in Taiwan. Okay. Yeah, and so when I was in China, I would flip over there all the time, and we'd you know goof around <laughs> in Taiwan. And that's a great, great place. Great place to hang out. Martin M, can you recommend any sport boat captains in SoCal that are hunting for tuna or yellowtail for this style of fishing? Most captains in SoCal are. are um, out to catch fish on the surface. surface yeah. Uh, do like when you go on the Queen or the San Diego, are they cool with you doing that? Oh, they're all in on that. Yeah. Yeah. We have. So there um, you go, uh, Martin. We have the San Diego, the Grande, uh, the Pack Queen, the Liberty. Um, yeah, a lot of boats are now doing that, using the the um, you know speed jigging for for bluefin. Is they, and they've been really successful. I've seen videos and pictures of you know um their catch and their customers catch and they've put on a lot of fish so we've referenced speed jigging we've been talking mm -hmm. about slow pitching mostly mm -hmm. what is speed jigging speed how is speed jigging different than yo-yoing an iron like i drop a jig down and wind on as fast as i can right on right cortez man. yeah how is it different so you're you're basically working the jig and getting that jig to dart in the zone yeah yeah really fast and then that's, that's when you're our, speed jigging. Yes. And so, how do you do that? Um, there's the there's it's it's online. It's hard to explain because yeah. it takes it takes a little time to get that we, rhythm and pattern. You and I are going to do this. Okay. Okay. Yeah, in the next cool. few days or whatever, All we're right. going to go go out here and we're going to do it. But so there's a technique that you use yeah. to make the jig dart. Yeah. Uh huh. And then um, the fish react to that. And big time. Big time. Way more than like if you're fishing a yo-yo. I mean, what it, do you think? It, I, I think if if they're biting the yo-yo, they'll definitely be biting the speed jig, vertical jig. Yeah. Yeah. I've had success at Farnsworth um, fishing the vertical jig. While Catching every, big yellows? Yeah, or what? big yeah. yellows. Yeah. Yeah. And I've done it at Sea Drills. I've done it um, even at Coronado's, Coronado Islands. I'm using a 100-gram speed jig and catching yellowtail on that. And it's, yeah, it's a lot of fun. That's awesome, yeah. man. That sounds like so much fun. It is. Do you cast, drop it straight down? What's the deal? So there's, there's certain, certain ways. Uh, a lot of times when there's not much current, um, you can just drop straight down. And um, there's times obviously where the current's ripping or I usually just try to like, uh, try to keep as vertical as possible. I'll cast upwind and let that jig just fall back toward toward me okay and you know whether it be slightly under the boat or up and down and then i'll usually start my retrieve then uh-huh yeah. and the retrieve you like so if you're fishing let's say you're fishing yellows you come up about halfway and then kick it in free spool or what um if i'm fishing if i'm just if there's not much current i'll just drop straight down i'll just work the column drop it back if i don't get bit and just do that yeah but with current it's hard because once you get scoped out, you pretty much have to reset in uh -huh. a way. Yeah. I mean, there's been times too where um, jigs are scoped out and you try to work it back a little bit. You get, you might get bit. I've seen it. I've seen people get bit that way too, but um, not, not, not many. And slow pitching, when, let's say you're slow pitching for white sea bass. Mm -hmm. Is it better on the anchor or when you're drifting? It's, I would assume drifting, but yes. I might be wrong. Yes. Yeah. It's very difficult to um, slow pitch jig. On, on the, the anchor, uh -huh. but you could still get bit. Yeah. Um, Why is it difficult? What makes it difficult? Because you're not, you're not covering, covering a lot of ground. A lot of ground. Yeah. Right? yeah. So it's kind of like you're just hoping the fish come under the boat or they're already there. You know. Yes. Yeah. So um, drift drift fishing is ideal, ideally for for slow pitch jigging. Perfect. Yep. Scott, do you know Scott Buchert? Scott. Nope. Scott is out there. He's a deckhand on the Ranger 85. Oh, okay. He's a stupendous person. All these people will, hey, we only have 32 likes. Come on, you guys, 50 <laughs> likes. Everybody out there will attest that Scott Buchert is a great guy. And Scott has a question for you, James. All right. The question is, how many times have you seen Top Gun Maverick? Just kidding. <laughs> what is your favorite rod and favorite jig to high-speed jigging? Favorite rod. Favorite rod. So, um... My Make sure it's one of our sponsors. No, I'm <laughs> Whatever you. <laughs> and my go-to rod is uh, the Phoenix Megalodon, um, the PE610, or actually, I like the PE36 is, is my favorite, but it's kind of undergun on big, big fish. I've, the biggest one I've caught on that setup. Um, 
with the PE36 is a 150 pound bluefin. And then that one, what, about 40 minute battle? Really? Yeah, that was on the San Diego. Oh, cool. Yeah. 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 That was, that was pretty cool. How cool is that to leave at six o'clock in the morning and be catching these enormous yeah. long range size fish? Yeah. We've, it's we've, so blessed. We're so blessed. We're so lucky. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, there's been trips too. Uh, me and my brother, this was probably our best trip. Um, size wise was uh, that we landed a 198 pounder, 191, 130, and 120 in the same day on the San Diego. Wow. Yeah. How amazing is that? That, that was incredible. Wow. Yeah. In incredible. And I, I, don't, I don't think we're out of that. I mean, we're just in a lull right now. Mm -hmm. We could conceivably get back to that. That bluefin is everywhere right now. Yeah. It's at Clemente. We saw it up there near Santa Barbara between there and the West End of Cat today mm -hmm. when the Pride was coming back. It's everywhere, man. Yeah. Can't wait for them to start biting. Oh, yeah, <laughs> no speak. kidding, man. Yeah. I had long hair when, <laughs> you know, before this all started. And what hat am I wearing? Daiwa. Okay, make sure I've got the right hat on here. I forgot. Great question, Scott. Dave Thompson, what jigs are similar to Mad Max? Um, um, the Yozuri Bonita. Yeah, right. And, um, and the then old Hulk school were um, what did we used to troll for Wahoo all the time? Can't remember. Oh, um, you know, right? Yeah. Um, help yeah. us, the Freeman Adventure family. <laughs> we'll come up with it. Uh, I think Halco makes something, but that's not what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of the jig that we all trolled with. For the Marauders. Marauders! Right, Give right. me five. <laughs> I'll see Top Gun uh, one more time just because of that. Eleven. I'll see. I'll try to translate into Mandarin for somebody <laughs> who wants to listen. Yeah, Marauders. Yeah, That's what they the look marauders. like. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, Rick Slater. Will old pen reel single speed reels catch these fish? I think you're talking about bluefin, right, Rick? Probably. Uh, yeah, I mean, if that's what you're talking about, yeah. yeah, you could catch them, but once again, it becomes a time element where like Matt Slurf, and I see his photos coming up here with his kids, it's great. You got to get, I mean, we kind of want you to get the fish on the boat for everybody involved because right. it's, once again, it's a numbers game. You got to get on the school that's going to bite. You drop on a school yep. and hang one fish, you're looking for the one where you hang six fish or right. eight fish. And so you got to keep moving and moving. So the quicker you get it on board, the, the next uh, one you can get to. Mm -hmm. Ed Nesbitt. Ed, you're always with us. I appreciate it so much. Ed here from 116 degree Palm Springs. Oh, nice and cool, huh? Was on the coal ball and the bluefin would not bite until we pulled out the forgotten best lure ever. Made the cedar plug, trolled way back. And we got 10 hookups, got five. Yeah. Friggin' cedar plugs work, yeah. don't they? We've got them around yeah, here somewhere, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they absolutely work. Yep. I don't know what it is, but. I don't know what it is, but that's a classic. Good question from Ruben Lopez. Ruben, my man, como estas? Hi guys, what's a speed jig look like? Did you bring a speed jig? Uh, yeah, I, I brought one of mine, but a lot of them are gonna be. Um... Is that a speed jig? It, 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 it fishes both. The, the, the knife jig is a, a speed jig, so... Hold it right, right up there so Ruben can see it. He's uh, got poor eyesight. Okay. Especially after 13 beers. Just kidding, Ruben. Yeah, so there, there's a bunch of different shapes. A lot of them have a, a little bit more weight to the bottom of it, so yeah. it sinks down really quick. And then uh, they're usually very s slim. Yeah. Yeah, you'll, you'll notice that a lot of the speed jigs are slim because they get down really quick and... Um, Get in the zone. Yep. If you drop down a piece of iron with a couple of hooks on it, would you get a bite? If they're biting like torpedo iron from sinkers, a freaking like construction site. I've seen I've seen videos of uh, <laughs> people rigging up forks. <laughs> did it yeah, work? Yeah, it did. Yeah. yeah. That's that's silly. I would never do that. A spoon, yeah, maybe, but not a fork. Fork, uh, knife it. too. Really? Yeah. Custom knife, and they just put the hooks on, and that's funny, get, man. Get, get that's it. hilarious stuff. Yeah. All right, uh, David Gwen, braid speedsters. Uh, oh. So that's a similar type of lure. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. The Freeman Adventure family coming in. Five forty slinger braid speedsters are similar to Mad Max. Yeah, David Maestro Marauders. Yes, mm -hmm. we were tongue tied there and couldn't <laughs> figure it out. All right, so let's talk species, okay? Let's right. talk. I want to catch. I'm on Cortez Bank. Mm -hmm. So, and I want to do the speed jigging thing. Mm -hmm. Do I have to be drifting or can I be on the anchor? 
you want to be drifting, but I know for Cortez, you, you're going to be on the pick. Yeah, you're going to be on the are, anchor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Well, let me. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But something else just dawned on me. So you're on a kelp paddy. Mm -hmm. You're drifting on kelps all yeah. the time because it's yeah. five thousand million fathoms deep. Yeah. Does it work there? It should yes. work really good, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you roll up on a kelp. Mm -hmm. Do you cast to the kelp and let it sink you there, know, or do you drop drop it with the wind in your face? Or it... there, there's a couple ways to approach it. I I, I generally like to. Uh, I'll I'll pitch the jig near the kelp. Sometimes I'll just even let it just you know I'll let everyone else fish the bait onto the kelp, and I'm just at the bow um, dropping a jig. Yeah. And a lot of times I get I'll get yellows. I even got a dorado was it uh, two years ago on a little sixty gram speed jig. How cool! Yeah. Yeah. And then um, yeah, I, usually when it's yellowfin tuna, they'll they'll usually be a little bit deeper. So if you drop it, I, they're usually like probably at 150, 180. So super effective fishing kelps because yep. you're always drifting. Yes. yes. Yeah. I've so, caught some big yellowtail underneath those kelp patties too, speed jigging. So slow pitching does that work on a kelp? Yeah. Yeah. Both techniques. Yep. But are they the same jig or different? Uh, different. They're different. different. Yes. So how do you make that? You just experiment, huh? Yeah. You go, I'm going to... There, there's a lot of different jigs that have different shapes. Yeah. Usually the more wider profile are the ones that are going to be more of a slow pitch jig. And, and do you make these jigs? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, you're no. making... The ones that I have available are, are the... The, the knife bird, jigs yeah, kind of thing? Jigs, yeah. yeah, and, and once again, jigs. how can we find those? Your, um, your jigs. I don't... I'm working on the website. It should yeah. be coming up in the next couple of weeks and then, man um, you and i are going to be busy we're shooting <laughs> instructional videos you right. got to get the website going right i got all kinds of stuff going on i'm i'm trying to decide whether to keep alex on or throw him out of here you know i'm going to let you make that decision keep him uh, all right <laughs> you got a guy on your side alex <laughs> yeah, alex is cracking up all right uh rick slater says thank you you are a teacher you make me alive he's got to be talking about you because i make <laughs> i make people want to kill themselves that's what I hear all the time. So thank you, Rick. Really appreciate it, my friend. So uh, kelps, it's going to work really good, and both methods work. Yeah. Okay. Both. Um, yeah. I was this out on um, a three-day trip on the Polaris Supreme with the guys from Johnny Jigs, and uh, they put on a clinic on slow pitch jigging bluefin tuna. And were they getting them? Yes. Let's talk about this. First of all, Aliar. Yeah. Oh my God! That guy is. That guy is putting numbers on the board. Yeah. He, he, whatever it is that you have to have to be a good captain, he's mm -hmm. got it. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. And you can tell me what's what's it like on on board? Professional. Yeah. Great crew. I'm I'm guessing. He's working nonstop. He's trying to get all his customers on on fish, and he does a really good job. He's always hunting, so. That's a good thing. He's got to be. Yes. I, I can tell. He's not, you're not going to walk into his wheelhouse. And I've been in that wheelhouse a million oh, yeah? times because I fished with Tommy Rothery. Oh. You know, he's a dear yeah. friend of mine. I went and visited with Tommy and Tommy said, Aliar is doing a great job yes. with the boat. But he's not, you're not going to walk in that wheelhouse and see somebody <laughs> with their feet on the dash no. looking at a book or something. Yeah. He's, he's like, always... I'm sure he's got glass and working, yeah. got somebody up in the box. And then people tell in the me, bucket. people tell me he's on Red Bull. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, they are. Go easy on that, <laughs> you know. Try bang; it's much healthier for you. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. So um, that that particular boat, you guys, you actually went out there and made it work. Slow yeah, pitching slow for pitch bluefin. Pitching. Yeah, they they did really well with it. Uh, Chris, Johnny, um, those guys, even uh, Corey, one one of our um, one one of my good buddies that fishes with us uh he he was on that trip him and his son they they were doing really well with slow pitch jigging so for bluefin too aliar says the fish are at 200 feet they mm -hmm. drop down to 240 or 230 or whatever yeah. it is 220 yeah. right yeah. and then what and then they just start using the the whole jigging motion um working that that jig in that in that water column and, they and were is this out. with the parabolic rod yes and so you're freaking Something similar to this. What yeah. the heck? I mean, on a big bluefin with the rod just yeah. They were they were um they landed some nice ones, uh, sixty pounders, seventy pounders. And they, does it take them more time because of that? Or no, I've seen them on those on that trip. They were getting them 
what, 25 minutes, maybe 30 minutes? Yeah. From tops. Gary Kwan told me from Taddy Lures again. Gary was, he's, he's trying to get me to slow pitch, and mm -hmm. I'm with a video camera all day long. So, but Jason, he got Jason hooked, the cook, because Jason's bought everything. There is, but he said, stay perpendicular, and the rod does all the work for you. Yeah. Is that true? Yep. I mean, I'm not doubting Gary, but I just want you to yeah. uh, affirm it. Yeah, so especially like um, when you're when you're fighting a fish too, you know, um, with a slow pitch rod, you're not you're not going to be pulling high high up and battling the fish that way. A lot of it, it's just basically pointing the rod at the fish or just keeping a slight bend in the rod, but it it doesn't it never goes high, you know. So um, you're basically using all that pressure drag pressure from your reel. Yeah. Yeah. And it's super effective. Yes, super effective. And it effective. works good on these bluefin, yeah. which is bitching, right? Yeah, same thing with the, and we're using short rods too. So, um, you know, we're pointing at, um, especially like speed jigging, we'll point the rod at the fish and just try to wench them in little by little. Okay. Yeah. Very good. And it's uh, an effective technique. I love Ruben Lopez. He's a guy, you know, just a super good guy, but he put a comment up there that I'm not, well, he says, keep Alex. <laughs> I don't know, Ruben. I'm watching him. You know, you and I are so interesting that Alex is playing crossword crap on his phone <laughs> or doing something over there. So Alex is getting up to see if that's true. Dave Thompson. Thanks, David M. 540 Slinger. That's Jeff Yeomans. Usually they are getting bit on the drop from my experience. Yeah, there's, um, that's what I, I always pray for. I'm like hoping a bluefin bites it on the, on the sink so I don't have to do much work. Yeah, right. <laughs> because jigging, jigging can be tiring sure, too, you know? Sure, yeah. But And when you get bit on the sink, yeah. it's like... So this guy, speaking of Alex, we're on the Malahini. He's fishing for four straight hours and no bites, uh -huh. right? And I'm filming. So I go, give me that. And so he hands me the rod and I, I make a cast and it's sinking. I'm one cast and uh -huh. I, all of a sudden it goes... Zzz, and I go, <laughs> here you go. <laughs> and he lost it. I, but <laughs> I felt bad for you, Alex, but yeah. Uh, getting bit on the sink is so yeah, cool, man. It is cool, but you know, if you don't get bit on the sink, um, just make sure you're you're in that zone, and you could just work work that that column, you know. And, and when you say in that zone, you're talking about where the captain is telling yes, you to drop yes, to, right? Yeah, yeah. Like for and me, you're only going to know that if you have some method of of measuring the colored line yeah, or whatever it yeah, is, right? Yeah. 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 And then um, one of the. Um, one of the things is also just when you're when you're working that column, try various uh, retrieve speeds, or even because they'll they'll bite on the pause sometimes these bluefin or fish in general sometimes they bite it on the pause where you're not doing anything, and then you just get bit. Uh huh. That that, that happened on your that. rod loads up yep. or what? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I notice that in surf fishing all the time. You stop. Uh -huh. And something jumps on it, mm -hmm. or right when you start up again, you get yeah. bit. It's like they're yeah. watching it, I think, right? Yeah. And then, yeah. So just try various retrieves because oh. um, there's been times on, on on some of my trips where the bluefin they didn't want anything on the sink, but as soon as you start retrieve and start getting that jig to dart around, it it was automatic. That's you awesome. Know? That's and awesome. And then I've been in this weird bite too, where the bluefin at night don't want anything except a super fast retrieve. Yeah. And I've had bluefin chase the jig all the way to the surface, and you just be like, whoa. You mean you see a big old fish? I see a oh. big old shadow come up underneath that. How cool is that? Yeah. Even though you don't get bit, it's bitching, right? Right. But then because I saw that, right. I dropped it back down again, and it did us that fast retrieve. Boom. Yeah. Bendo. Yeah. 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 Now, Matt Slurf, the guy that was on the Spirit of Adventure, and his photos are coming up here, he said... Don't don't feel bad about taking him on and saying he's a complete he doesn't know what he's talking about. But he at least I don't know if it was this trip or in general he fishes a lot. Almost to 50 likes. I love you people. Thank you so much. And that includes you uh every uh, includes everybody. He said guys were whining it fast and getting bit. He was whining it slow and getting bit. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, yeah, bluefin are weird. They're yeah. fickle, right? Yep. So is it different every night? You got to figure it out? Yeah. Once you figure it out, though. Stay you're, with you're, it. You're gonna, yeah, you're going to get bit regularly. And one way to figure it out, I'm guessing, is if you're not getting bit, pay attention to the guys that are getting yeah. bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Go ask them, right? Yeah. How, are you winding that fast or right. not? For me, I always ask, like, 
captains, crew, like how's the current been? Cause yeah. that's, that's important. I, I honestly feel that that's one of the most important and how deep you guys have been marking the bluefin tuna because um, you, it gives you an idea of what you want to like start with in a way, you know? Yeah. So want to start with like a 200 gram jig or 250 or 300 gram. It all depends on the on the conditions. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Can I make a comment about you yes. real quick? Yep. You are doing an excellent job oh, tonight. Thank you. It's so nice to have you <laughs> here. You. Really, fantastic. You're a great teacher. I'm learning a lot and I'm getting excited about all that. <laughs> so it's great stuff. All right, uh, let's see. Roland, you must have low gear for the big ones. I have to agree. And that's what Matt's talking about, you know, getting those fish. There's the pride catch today. Getting those fish on the boat, I mean, yeah. So we're not talking about meat fishing, but we're talking about getting the opportunity so everybody yeah. on board can partake right, right. in this, right? Yeah. And so you got to have the right gear. You got to have the right gear. Um, he was low gear for the big ones. Yeah, yeah. Generally, like the jigging reels, they're mostly either five to one, four to one. Okay. So those, those are. I, You're not gonna have. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Yeah. Danny Pan, I love my jigging master. Is that that thousand dollar reel? Yes. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I bet you do, Danny. <laughs> Spent a grand on that thing. You better like it. Um, uh, Roland, I've seen one pound torpedo sinkers rigged with assist hooks working. Yeah, there's all kinds. Of yeah, stuff, that right? was that was on the new land. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in fact, somebody I might have been uh, Jeff. He sent me that video. Oh, yeah. I think I ran yeah. it during the show. Hey, this kid fishing the break wall had that little white sea oh. bass. He had a giant yellow tail. Good kid, man. And that's Megan Gallagher. She's a great person also. Uh, helps us with our Mexico efforts. I just wanted to point. I saw that come up, so <laughs> I wanted to point that up. Um, uh, let's see here. Dino! Dino, I got to come down there and see you. Or you got to come up here and see me. He's a great guy. Dino, what are the size ranges on these jigs? Looking for smaller sizes yeah. for fishing suspended bass. Salt and fresh. Can you fish freshwater? Yeah. With this? Yeah. These? Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. Um, is it for, good? Does it work? My kids are big bass fishermen. Yeah. Um, there's, they, they make small jigs at, as small as, I think, seven grams. Oh, yeah? Yeah. But probably the ones for the lakes, maybe like the 40, 40 grams and under, I think will be pretty um, good for, the, for, the, for lake fishing. So you can fish bass yeah. with these? Yeah, Do I, guys that are on the tournaments fish it? Is that okay? Is I it? don't know. They, they, they might. Yeah. I know. I, I think uh, oh, Gary, okay, Gary Gary has tried the smaller jigs and he's had some success with it. Yeah. Uh, I know some guys that fish stripers using uh, slow pitch jigs, like small ones, like 30, 40 gram jigs, and they they've done well with that too. Yeah. So I had a friend once and he got all excited. He looked at this thing. Mm -hmm. He thought it said strippers. I said, No, no, that's stripers. Calm down. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Uh, let's see. Do, excellent question, Dino. Yeah. Ed Nesbitt. Would a Shimano Ocean Jigger be a good reel for slow pitch jigging? Yeah. Great question, Ed. Yeah, Ed. Um, the the popular one in Japan and even here in the states are the Oshia Jigger um, 1500, which is like I would say I think it's uh, same size as a Trinidad 14A. I, I don't. I'm not 100% sure. Uh -huh. But that reel um, will get the job done, especially in our local waters. So yellowtail, white sea bass, uh, rockfish, uh, bass, sand bass, calicos. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good all-around uh, local reel for sure. Excellent. Yeah. Slam and Sammy. Here's a, here's a question. I have the same question. I'm with you, Slam and Sammy, on this one. Um, slow pitch versus yo-yo jigging. Yeah. Um, so can you compare and contrast those two? Like when I was in school, the teacher would say, write an, or, write an essay on compare and contrast. So... Well, like, let's just start with what's more effective, do you think? Uh, they're both, they're both going to be effective. Okay. Yeah, because uh, you're the, um, the yo-yo, you know, you're burning it up fast, yeah. dropping ba back down. So you're covering territory. Yeah, you're territory. covering that territory. Yeah. Um, Water column. Slow pitch, you're going to be working those zones a little bit more slow, right. slowly. You know, you're going to be working it slowly. So they're effective because they have different types of falling actions, you know, there's right. all kinds of lures, uh, slow pitch lures, and they're going to fall differently. And um, yeah, it, they'll, they'll get hammered on the, Both. On the sink. Yeah. You think, is it like a tie? I, I don't know. Yeah, it's we hard gotta, to say, right? Yeah, That's a tough to question. But they um, both work. 
100%. But like old guys like me who are used to yo-yo fishing, mm -hmm. they should not, I t I'm telling you right now, the key to moving on in life is not getting stuck in the past. You got to move with the times yeah. and kind of, you know, yeah. so, you know, that's why, like, you know, guys that won't get an, well, I, I mean, an iPhone or whatever, I mean, Mm -hmm. Maybe I shouldn't say that. I'm insulting half of my audience, the ones that are ready to kick the bucket. But I mean, it's it's a matter of like trying something new, yeah. try something different, yeah. right? Like like I always tell people just to give it a try because yeah yeah it's 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 a fun and effective way, you know. Like you know, it's 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 something that I think everyone should should at least give it a try. Yeah, I say yeah. the same thing to my kids when they were growing up about food. Like oh that I don't. Just try it. If you don't like it, I don't care, but try it, you little right. brat. You know, right. and so we say, Andrew, he's back. What, what's a good rod length if I'm fishing mainly sport boats? Just want to avoid rubbing line against the boat as much as possible when reeling in after a hookup. And of course, Andrew with another great question. Yeah. I love, he's such a knowledgeable guy. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be working together a lot closer because in my demographic, old people like us, he does a lot of stuff with Medicare um, and that, and so he's going to be making those services available. But what about that question? Yeah, so um, most most slow pitch jigging rods, they're they're um, probably they're short. They're probably six eight will probably be one of the long longer ones that they make, but they'll be as short as five and a half feet, five feet, but. Um, a good one for the sport boats probably be like six eight, and if you're speed jigging, they're they're short rods too. They're six foot and under, and then the ones I I fish are five and a half to five five two, so yeah. Okay. Usually, usually they're they're short in length. Excellent, excellent. Uh, David Maestro, great show, loads of information. All thanks to this man right here. You got all kinds of people tuning in. This show is really getting. Hey, we're two away from two likes, and we got fifty. And what's your wife's name? It's Guyana. Guyana, Guyana. I'm not going to let James go home until we get 100 likes. We just hit fifty. All right, you cannot go until we get 100. So if you want this so, man to be reunited with his wife tonight, you better push that like button. Hit that like button, or he's going to be in divorce court tomorrow. So. All right, uh, Dino, or, yeah, Dino. Hey, Dino's going to be on uh, the Malahini on the 22nd. Oh. That's great. I wish you were going to be there. <laughs> what do you do in your, in your normal life? What do you do for a living? This? Uh, yeah. That's Basically, great. Basically, I just uh, sell, sell some fishing lures. That's and, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Great business to be <laughs> in. All right, um, David Maestro. Phil loves jigging. I do. I watched him. Bounce a big yellowtail at Cortez on hundred pounds. I did. I was up in the bow. Thank you, David. You know, <laughs> people don't think I know how to fish. And I don't that well, but yeah, I was up in the bow. And um, Mark, the deckhand on the Amigo, mm -hmm. Jeff Jessup was looking out the window. He was talking to Jeff Marklin on the Thunderbird. Okay. And he, I could hear him going, "Yeah, Phil's got a yellow. You know, he's up in the bow." And so I go to my kids. I go, "I can throw this thing." And they go, "Throw it, throw it." <laughs> so for my kids, I wanted to show off. And yeah, man, I just wound down on it and threw it up in the bow. And then Jeff looked down and he goes, you still got it, old man. <laughs> and so that was fun. I loved it. I loved yeah. that. So, hey, David, thanks for making me sound like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Dino, you can teach old dogs new tricks, but I love the yo-yo. I do too. Yeah. I love the freaking yo-yo. But I, I want to play with this, you know, speed jigging. And I, I especially kind of like the idea of the slow pitch, mm -hmm. just because it's, it just seems like so cool, like that yeah. darting of the jig. I can yeah. see a fish. Yeah. I could see that motion, like enticing bites yeah. in my pea brain. Yeah. Because my brain is like a fish's brain. Right. And so, oh, don't agree with that. <laughs> that a fish's brain is not very good. But I mean, it just seems so unique to, to do that. So, all right, I want to catch rockfish. Yeah. What do you do? Drop down to the bottom and just, I bet, I bet, I bet you kill them. Yeah, you, you will. It's, um, it's dropping, if you, if you drop all the way to the bottom, most... You're um, never going to get there, right? You get stopped on the way down? Is that what you're going to say? Or no, no, no. But you'll, you'll catch a lot of chucks if you, if you fish really, really oh, close to the Oh, the endangered chucklehead, right? <laughs> yeah. I think, what, you can only keep one down there? Yeah, that's right, because oh, there's no. only 10 million yeah. of them out there. And then there's, um, there's lingcod, too. Ling, lingcod. Lings are, eat it good? Yeah, they eat it good. Do they? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like fishing, like, the 
some of the longer jigs, the longer uh, flutter style jigs for rockfish. Yeah. Because um, I can catch the ones that are suspended, and if they don't bite, I get down to the bottom. Um, yeah, for some reason, a lot of the chucks, a lot of the link cod gobble that thing down. So that's a good one. Yeah, yeah that's a good one. Um, like there was one time we were fishing up in um, Morrill Bay. For, Great for rockfish. Yes. Yeah. I hooked two legal lings on one jig. Oh no, I love that. That man. was awesome. That was. Were they decent big ones? Like yeah, they were twelve big, or like bigger. One of them was a twelve pounder. The other one was a nine. Nice. Yeah, it felt heavy. I can imagine, yeah. right? And two it was lings. On the slow pitch. My, on my slow pitch setup. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you exclusive? Do you ever fish bait? No, I can't. Can Rarely. Imagine. I can imagine you do. Yeah. I know. I know a lot of my friends. They 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 know I don't. I don't even bring a bait rod. Is that like feeding the fish to you? I mean, people that, <laughs> no. that, that fish bait, they say it's like feeding the fish. Using a lure is like tricking them into it. There's something more it's just, exciting about it. Yeah, this is something that I like to do is uh, fish jigs. Yeah. You know, I, I watch these Vietnamese guys down by my house, and they're mm -hmm. fishing these sandworms. Freaking guys are catching these giant spot fin croaker. So I'm like, ah, I guess, I'll, you know, all I do is throw lures. Okay. And I switch to bait, and... Right away. <laughs> I don't like it. I, I still like, because you're just kind of stuck in one's area. I like walking up and down yeah, the beach yeah. and trying to figure it out. Great questions. Freeman Adventures family, we all love you. Thanks. Keep them coming because he can't go home until we get 100 likes. So that's it. I'll all right. Then. Steve Ennis. Any, oh, we already did that, right? Oh, no. Any specific brand of slow pitch lures you prefer will work better than others? Hearts, uh, oh, you might have to insult somebody. <laughs> no, no, I know. Uh, there, there's good ones. Uh, what the sh the all time one is? What probably like um, that's available here is the flatfall. Flatfall is a really good one. Um, you have the SK jigs too. The yes. Taiwo SK jigs. Right. Yeah, the, that's a good one too. Boy, you're hitting our sponsor all the time. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll slip you that twenty later. <laughs> Good job. And then um, there's a lot of other brands mm. like, um, let's see, and from Japan, they there's all kinds of them. But um, Jig Pro, Jig Pro, I think is one that's um, becoming popular. Yeah. For slow pitch jigging, here. Um, what I can't even think of any other ones. Uh, Johnny Jigs too. Johnny Jigs is a yeah. Big, that's our our chef likes Johnny Jigs. Yeah. He's crazy about Johnny that. Johnny Jigs has a lot of different ones available. So yeah. There's, there's a few. Gary Kwan, can novices use any parabolic rod to slow pitch? Gary, it's good to see you. Alex, get this thing down a little bit, please. Thank you. Okay, can, can, did you hear that question? Can yeah. novices use any parabolic rod to slow pitch? As long as the rod is parabolic, can you use it? I would say it, it should be all right, I think. Yeah? I think it should be okay. Like glass rods, you know, like very soft parabolic yeah. rods. I, I think it, it would work, yeah. All right, very good. Uh, DJ B, I've seen, stop, why am I reading like that? I've seen slow pitch be very effective, but what is the realistic limit for blue fan tuna? I'm just not sold on trying to land a hundred plus pound blue fan on a bass rod. Well, he makes a good point. One of I want our, you to address it. One of our followers, uh, Andy, he landed a 193 pound bluefin on a slow pitch setup. Really? Yeah, this was, I wanna say either three weeks ago, maybe. Do you remember what boat? He, uh, he was on curious. the tribute. Uh huh. On the tribute. 193. Do you remember how, what, how long he was on the fish or any of those details? A little over an hour, I believe. That's not bad yeah. for a 200 pound bluefin? Yeah. I mean, he, that. His setup was a Oshia Jigger. Thousand with uh, Shimano, I think it's a Type J. I want to say it's a Type J rod. Yeah. Uh, slow pitch rod, but it was the their heaviest model, which was I think the 58 XXH was the combo that he. So it was almost a 200 pound fish that he got in an hour on slow pitch gear. Yeah, it's wow. amazing. And and do you think that's is that an outlier? Is that is was that something that doesn't occur that often or do you think eh, no that I think that's it, possible I think it's possible yeah I I, I still want to test what's the biggest tuna you've caught on that kind of gear on slow pitch jigging yeah. it's probably what like a 
30 or 40, okay. uh, 30 or 40 pounds. You need to get one of those 100 pounders, huh? Because yeah. you're the man. I want, I want to. So with Andy landing that, it's definitely encouraging. And then I'm, I, want, I would like to give it a try, too. I'm going to, I'll give it a try. Excellent. Uh, hey, down, down or, yeah, keep going down. No, the other way. Alex? Up or whatever. Tony Gonzalez is where I need to be. Tony, good evening, my friend. Good to see you. What do you think about the Abbott HXJ for jigging? Good question, Tony. I don't have much knowledge of... Bad question, Tony. Sorry. Because I don't have any answer either. Yeah. Well, you're going to research that and get back to it. Okay, yeah. And then we'll let Tony know. All right. Right? Yeah. And Tony probably should win the prize for stumping, uh, (laughs) you know? Well, that's your decision. I'm not going to get involved in that. DJB, for your information, no disrespect. DJB... We don't take any disrespect. We're asking questions and learning together. So we didn't even feel that way, right? You don't feel that way. So no, no, don't worry about that. Tim P, how many hooks on a knife jig for bluefin? And do you tie to the top or the bottom of the jig? Tim, great question. All right. So for the knife jigs, um, you can, you know, everyone has their own preference. I've seen guys do... uh, dual assist hooks on the top dual assist hooks on the bottom and that 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 works mm-hmm. because you know the more hooks are in them you know at least you're kind of secure in a way where you're not just don't have just one hook on you know so yeah i would say like like i think i said i mentioned earlier like for me i like to fish one hook on top one Correct. hook on bottom yeah. yeah that's what you like and then um do you tie the top or so you're going to tie the top of the of the jig so usually um you can tell by you always tie where the eye is at yes that's the same side as um the eye cuz some jigs are <laughs> kind of you know it's hard to tell like but yeah Always toward the eye, yeah. All right, perfect. Yeah. Very good. You don't have to look up there. I'll read them to you because okay. you're going to get a sore neck <laughs> looking like that. Uh, all, right. all right, so Kai Fish Killer, I just got back from Cedros. Cedros. I ended up with 28 yellowtail. That's awesome. On the surface iron. Nice going, man. Mm-hmm. One released. I got them on, a, on two 10-foot rods, 90% on a Kaibo 7X. Awesome watching Yellowtail blow up on it five to ten feet away. You fish Cedros, right? Yeah, I've, I've been it, there once. It's so special, isn't it? It is, it is. It's an awesome fishery. Did you fly into the island and no, fish, or we you were on, on a long-range boat? Long-range boat, seven-dayer, really? yeah. What boat was it? How old are you? You look like you're like 20. 40. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't look a day over 90, do I? Nope. Yeah, thank you. You're so young. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so what long-range boat? It was the Royal Polaris. Oh yeah. yeah, so we did a seven day on that boat one one time. Fun yeah. times, huh? Yeah, that I was made awesome. a lot of trips down there on the Polaris Supreme. So okay, yeah, yeah. God, That's that place, man! You just look out and there's sheets of yellows everywhere. Yeah, there's some good sea bass fishing there, halibut fishing. There's yeah. all kinds of great stuff yeah. going on there. All right, um, hey, where are you going? Is that the next question, yeah. Roland? Okay, thank you. Uh, two hooks on the bottom only. If you foul a yeah. big one, you're in trouble. It is okay. It's- Wrong. It's challenging. Very good. Kai Fish Killer, do you ever fish slow pitch like a surface iron? What a good question. Mm, slow pitch? So can you throw a slow oh, pitch actually, jig out yeah. and wind it across the surface? Yeah, you could. You and could. you'll get bit? You could work it on the surface. If you're probably, if you're fishing a lighter jig, yeah, yeah, you'll be able to just ca- uh, cast it out and just work it along the surface. You get, you'll get you yeah, you'll get bit. Yeah, hey, no, don't 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 worry. We're not going to keep you much longer. <laughs> what? Three more hours, Alex? Yeah. yeah perfect. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, Jeff wants to know. Definitely prefer working a lure over the bait and weight technique. I know that, yeah. Jeff. You're all <laughs> over at Five Forty Slingers Club. Yeah. Are all about that. Gabriel de la Trinidad. The ball bearing on the reels makes any difference on them? Do they make a difference? Ball bearings on the reels. Ball bearings on the reels. Not sure. Yeah, I think they do actually, Gabriel. So I think yeah, they're smoother. Usually, and yeah, usually what's the higher, higher number of bearings? Den- bearing? Dennis Luang, Dennis, is that you down in Mexico? Or I think, <laughs> I mean, you've got your place down. You're the guy, Dennis. Are you the guy that provided us with so much fish for all the hotel workers in Rosarito? 
I think that's you. He says, what's up, James and Philip? Do you know Dennis? Yeah. He's I down do. in Mexico all the time. Is he that guy? Yeah. 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 Well, that's a great info. Dennis. Dennis is a prince of a guy. Yeah. We were feeding. Cool. We fed like 400 people down there. We got donations and went down there. And Dennis provided us with fish for every family. Awesome. Super great guy. Awesome. Sam and Slammy, does slow pitch work on yellowtail? Yes. How does. does it work? What's the best way to do it? So you got yellows boiling in the corner. Boiling in the corner. And they're, and they're all over the place. What do you do? You want to slow pitch for them. Oh. You don't walk back in the stern and cast with all those bait guys, do you? No. I, I, Go up in the bow, maybe? Or, or, or yeah. you can't do it, or what? No, you, you could. I think, I think if you were fishing on the... On the drift or something. Yeah, on the drift, that would that would be probably ideal. Uh huh. And then you could just probably drop alongside, depending on the current, obviously, because the the current plays a big part in in what size jig and what um, what type of jig you want to choose. You're not gonna get out of here for much long. Oh my God, you got a lot of people watching. Sixty likes. Your wife. Okay. Come on, we're gonna have to, <laughs> like a hostage video. We'll have her on. Will you please give just a few more likes? I want to see my husband tonight. Something like that. All right. Um, Kai Fish Killer. Largest was a 27-pound, 10-ounce. Wow. Some That's others around here. Nice fish. Awesome. Nice. Do you use the Daiwa Sakan? How do you pronounce that? Or the Daiwa Saltiga TJ Jigs? Sakanas, I think. Yeah, yeah. He, he means the Zakana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the Zakanas and the T TG I haven't tried. Uh -huh. I know that those are hard to find and... I know Japan has has them, so you probably have to order them straight from Japan. But yeah, the Zakanas, they work really well. Yeah. Yo, they're great jigs. Yeah, they're yeah. they're probably one of the hot jigs right now for the bluefin when they're up on the you know? Yeah. Exactly. No, they are though, right? Yeah. yeah. We don't associate ourselves with <laughs> we're only with the very best, except right. for our intern. <laughs> then we cut some corners there once in a while. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, David Gwen. I've seen guys rigging knife jigs with circle hooks on the bottom. What are your thoughts? Do you, you like a circle hook? I don't know. I have. I, I personally <laughs> haven't seen that yet. Uh huh. But would you do it then? So obviously you wouldn't do it, and you haven't seen it. I then. don't know. I'm curious myself on if that works. Hey, David, that's a good question. We'll have to dig into that a little yeah. bit more. Have you decided who you're going to give one of these jigs to? Yeah. Who? Oh. Um, Andrew. Andrew, who? It's like up there. All right, hold on, Andrew. You just won what did he win, David? He got you got two knife jigs, and oh, now Andrew's in the business, like almost, right? <laughs> Do, we I could mean, give them to him. Yeah, yeah, but but I'm, I'm, well, Andrew, if you want them, you got them. I shouldn't yeah. take your jigs away from you. <laughs> all right, you know how to get in touch with him. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Now you're not allowed to pick Scott Buker. Now get me down to my questions again. It is. All right. Perfect. Um, let's see. Where are we now? We okay, are uh, Tony Gonzalez. The Abbott HXJ is similar. To the Trinidad 40M, yeah. with the difference that the Abbott is two speed, 5.4 inch high, and 1.9 and low. It'll work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well. Yeah, because that's a that's a good size reel. A 40 narrow size reel is pretty much the size you you would like to jig with for sure. All right, big. What is it? Big. Big Chino Jeff. That's Jeff. Big Chino Jeff. <laughs> Thank you. Big yeah. Chino Jeff. Slow pitch jigging. Versus long fall jigging. Long what fall. is long fall jigging? You're using a, a longer uh, longer rod, and it's basically has a longer uh, range, falling range, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Do you prefer one over the other or not? They're both effective. Yeah. Some sometimes sometimes the <clears throat> um, with the long fall you cover so much water, so you know. You'll, you'll have then, then your standard uh, shorter rod. Is Big Chino Jeff a big? Yes. He's, he's a big guy? Yeah, he's a big guy, and yeah. he, fish, he's, he fishes with, with us, too. Anybody gives me any trouble, I could get <laughs> Big Chino Jeff to help me out? Yeah. Really? Be yeah. my bodyguard? Yeah. You're hired. <laughs> Take care of this kid over here. Samuel de la Torre wants to, This jigging stuff might be a great topic for a seminar. Yes, of course. That's why we're having this <laughs> podcast tonight, Sam. I'm kidding. Let's put it together, guys. I'm in. I'll do anything with Sam. I'll do. Sam, are we doing it at your place, or are we going over to the Torrance, uh, what's the name of it? He's going to kill me. Shulb's Shop. I can't even remember <laughs> what it is. Jason's Restaurant in Torrance. How about that? Is that a good idea? Let's do it. Okay. Jose Guevara. 
Have you ever used Sea Falcon jigs? I actually just purchased some a couple weeks ago. So those so are I, slow pitch and yeah, yeah. uh huh. Yep, they're they're, they're um, the ones from Japan. Yep. Oh really? Yeah. So they're probably good, right? Yeah. I mean, because they, they, guys... they have good shape to them. That's why I I I ended up buying. I think I bought like two or three. Um, and you, you um, haven't used them yet. No. Nope. When's your next trip? My next trip is the end of this month. I'm on a three day on the Pack Queen. Oh, nice. Yeah. You, so you do you go Pack Queen San Diego? Pack Queen San Diego? No, I I, I fish a, a lot of boats. A lot of boats. Okay. I but, like the new Loan too. Uh -huh. The new Loan's a good boat that that I like to fish on. Nice and low to the water. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 All right, um, Tim P. Oh my God, Tim P. I, I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> you get a gonna, lot of support. Yeah. You have the best <laughs> intern, Alex. Come out here and take a bow <laughs> for Tim P. Just like you know, bow to the man. Thank him. You, here, you can say something right here Thank in my you. microphone. Thank you so much. There you go. What, <laughs> Tim? There you go. Steve Bermudis. How do you pick colors for fast jigging? for different species of fish. Well, we've come to the conclusion that colors are relevant, or is that yeah. not true? No, the, the colors are irrelevant, but like a lot of the guys um, like a specific color. So like the, the popular ones are the blue and pink, the Katy Perry, Yeah. the purple silver, the um, pink silver jigs. Yeah, those, those are the standard colors that usually get bit. Well, let's ask Sam De La Torre if he thinks color matters, because oh, yeah. I know that Gary Kwan kind of doesn't think it matters and me I, I i don't know because i've used like you know my old jig that i love so much mm -hmm. with the paint all chipped off it mm -hmm. and it still gets bit it still because gets it bit. swims good right yes, yes. Uh, that's at least my thought process yeah. and so yeah i don't know it's uh interesting ruben lopez is in for the jigging seminar are you in yeah you're I'll gonna be, be our man <laughs> right i'm gonna sit there and film you and then you know get get alex to do handstands or something in case you in case you get a little tired and you need a break, we'll have Alex come out and do a, you know some kind of a thing. Ricardo Villa, when jigging for rockfish, do you use the treble hook or the assist hook? I use assist hooks. Yeah. On on mine, yeah. And a lot of the assist hooks, um, they're thin gauge um, hooks. So those, with those thin gauge hooks, they really um, can penetrate you know, the fish's mouth, and they're really super sharp. A guy by the name of um, uh, Steve Virtue, he run, used to run the Pacific Islander. He's now running the California out oh. of Ventura Sport Fishing, okay. which is the old Matt Walsh. Mm -hmm. But Steve came up to my son, Patrick, and I in the bow of the Pacific Islander. I don't know. It's got to be over five years ago because I was in China. Mm -hmm. And he had kind of a slow pitch kind of jig with the assist hooks, and he goes, you will murder the rockfish yeah. with this. Yeah. So we're like, oh, okay, you know. Yeah. And it was full speed. We never ever drop without getting bit. Yeah. It's so much fun. It is fun. It's it is so much fun. fun. Yeah. And you you don't have to schmuck around with bait. Right. And all that, you know, your hands are all screwed up. Yeah. You're just wailing on the fish. It really it was really cool. Uh, Helen, finally a lady. What is your favorite size knife jig? Helen, oh, that's a good thank one. you for making our show so much better. It's nice to have you on board with us tonight. What's your favorite favorite size, size knife jig? I, I like <coughs> the 200 gram. I feel like that one right there. I've seen so many big fish caught on that size jig, and it's pretty versatile because you could cast it out long ways right. and let it, you know, so you, you could get vertical on that. But yeah, that, that that's that's probably my favorite size. My second one will probably be the 250. Yeah. Because the 250, I've had a lot of success with. And, and that is all subject to change. Like if you get out there yeah. and you got too much current, right. then you're gonna bump it right. up, right? Yeah. And you make 400s? Up to 400. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Matt said that was working great on yeah. that sort of it. But other times it's gonna be the lighter one, right? Yeah. Especially especially when there's no current. That's where you can really scale down your jigs. You could even choose a flutter, flutter style jig so it slowly falls through right. the column. And you can choose lighter, lighter um, jigs like a Zakana or a Colt Sniper, you know, in like the 100, 130 gram size. Right. Yeah, you'll, 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 you'll be really effective with that. Man, this sounds like so much fun that, that you know, just that 
that whole thing about hanging a fish on the iron. Yeah. When you get that bite, it's <laughs> so primal, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yep. There's nothing better. Nothing better. I mean, even like not fishing this style, but just throwing an iron, hooking a barracuda yeah. or a calico bat. Yeah. When you get bit, yeah. I don't know, man. It, there's nothing better. Yeah, you than just fishing. get, you know, you're winding it in, and you just get stopped. Yeah, yeah. and it's like, whoa, you know, yeah. did that just? I mean, your brain is like, right, oh, right. you know, that yeah. that is so cool. Uh, let's see. Kai fish kill. Oh no, I'm sorry. Let's see. We're uh, oh, we're with Steve Bermudez. Is this technique for shoulder problem people <laughs> and carpal tunnel people? It can be. Really? You're 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 getting a good workout. Steve's trying to shoulders. be funny. <laughs> yeah, Steve is funny. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I guess right. You you do get it's a good a workout. workout, right? It's a workout, but slow pitch jigging is easy. That's that's um. That doesn't require much. The high speed. Yeah, the high speed stuff though, yeah, you're, you're getting a workout. Yeah, I, uh, have I seen video? I mean, it looks like these guys are going through all these gyrations and everything else, yeah. right? When they're yeah. doing that? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I mean, you got to break into a sweat, right? <laughs> yeah, but you know, you do it for short periods of time. You know, like for me, I, I'm not jigging all the way up to the surface, but I'll jig in the zone, work, work around there, and then just drop it back down and just do the same thing. But I'm only working like, does at certain depths. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. That all makes sense. Yeah. All right. Um, Ed Nesbitt is back. Ed always has great questions. There was a guy that had these little battery operated mini lights on his jig. The water turned them on. Do you know anything about that? I've seen it. Really? The... And so you put it in the water and it turns on. Yeah. That's I've cool. seen that. It's a little light that goes in the middle of the jig. Yeah. So I've never tried it, but I've seen it though. Do you think it? I mean, just taking a guess, what do you think? Would that work? I think just, Sam, do you think it would work? Gary, do you think it would work? <laughs> I think the James? The shape of the jig that, that they make, it's I think it'll get bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it works. Yeah, why not, right? Yeah. It'll, it's just yeah. something to draw attention to. Yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, Kai Fish Killer, you ever put scent on jigs? No. Mm. I yeah. I've never. Mm. I've I've only probably <clears throat> uh, with my assist hooks I have I'll, I'll use some that have the crystal flash to it, you know, the the crystal flash, uh, flash and then I'll also use, sometimes I'll, I'll use it without it. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Yeah, I, you don't think it would be effective, any more effective you doing it, right, right? Right, Yeah. All right, Gary Kwan, lure action is number one. Color is secondary to the degree of visibility. And Gary ought to know from Taddy Lures, a great guy, great friend, we did this whole casting thing at the park and it was great we had over 100 people show up okay. and Gary was out there just I mean there was a guy I think it was Vern Val Vallis I think and he goes you know Gary he went from person to person to person so those are the kind of kind people <laughs> we have in the Freeman Adventure family um yeah Dennis from Mexico I love Dennis such a uh, thoughtful and good guy um Timpy do you use hookup baits I haven't tried it. You haven't used hookup baits? No. Okay, I have. Yeah, they're good. I know they're they work. get bit, though. They I've seen a like lot crazy. of people get bit on them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Steve Bermudez, does the wire run through the jig on these type of jigs? Yeah. It does. Do. Is that important? It is. For the strength or what? Yep. Uh -huh. Because there'll be times if they're not wired through, then that, that wire just pulls right through that jig. Yeah. A lot of them are built um, lined through all the way and then and they'll probably make the wire go, you know, up up the jig. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, they're, they're wired through, though. All right, excellent. Yeah. Remember, folks, 100 likes, or this man will not see his wife tonight. Get those likes up. <laughs> yeah, please. Yeah, he wants out of here now. <laughs> Dennis, I'm a moron. I read Dennis from Mexico, and I say, hey, thanks. Then I didn't read his question. <laughs> Sorry. James, do you think jigging is better than bait fishing for bluefin for all weather conditions? Windy and strong drift also. So when you're drifting, that's when you want to be using this style of, yeah. but I, he's talking about like, what if, what if it's blowing 20 or it's blowing nasty 20. out? Is it, is, does this work? Yeah. The probably, jigs, it works really good. The then, jigs huh? are probably going to be your number one <clears throat> option in, in that type of condition. Uh, you probably be fishing heavier jigs, maybe 500. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, that. they were fishing those on the Spirit yeah. of Adventure. Yeah, so probably 500 and up. 
So I know that the popular one is a Mustad Rip Roller 500. That's that's a good, uh, big one. A yeah. Big jig. Yeah. Uh, some guy. Yeah. And he told me he caught one on that Rip Roller yeah. the other day, and I think it was a 500. Yeah. I know a lot of a lot of fish have been caught on that one. Yeah. It was Vern. I know this okay. guy Vern that went to our casting thing. He said okay. he did that. Nice. And incidentally, there's a player or the uh, that's him and his kids, and those are the fish that were caught on the Spirit of Adventure. They returned today. Uh, there's Matt Slurf, my buddy. Um, all of these photos that you're seeing up here, except like that one, the Rosarita Beach Hotel, but the, most of this stuff is pretty current. So I try to put up current stuff like the uh, Pride coming in and everything else, just to let everybody know. Nice. All right, uh, Gary Kwan, the light will work. Visibility. All right. All right. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Tony Gonzalez, these lights are for deep drop swordfish. I've seen them at tackle shops. Yeah, I mean, Tony, it makes sense. And Gary kind of... Uh, you know, reiterates the fact that it's all about visibility. You want the fish when it's dark and it's deep. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of these fish, like swordfish, have these giant eyes. Albuquerque have these giant eyes, yeah, so right. they can see pretty good. But you, you know, I mean, you want to make it easy <laughs> for them to see that so they can bite it. Yeah. Tim P, what is your cure for seasickness? Pills or the patch? You want me to answer this? Yeah. So my friend Bob Gifford. <laughs> He, he, I haven't seen him for 20, 30 years, and he came, I was over at KC Anglers Club giving a speech. He showed up with this other guy, Nick Acosta, mm -hmm. and so he went, He goes, you know, I'd love to fish with you, but I get seasick. I go, dude, you ought to try the patch. Mm -hmm. And he, I mean chronically seasick. Like, he goes out there and it's blowing three knots and he's vomiting. Yeah. He, he's been on the Amigo, the Pride, and we've been in some what I call jackass weather, mm -hmm. which is when the seas are coming yep. from all directions. Yep. And he's fine. So the patch, Tim, this guy, if anybody was not going to make it through, it would be him. And he's on every single trip now yeah. and loving it. So it changed his life. He's, he's told me it's really made a huge difference. Oh. Israel! James, do you use any CRC brass jigs for tuna? Um, I actually just got my hands on one of them from the steel bait. And um, yeah, I, I still haven't given it a try yet, but... Do you I, recommend people try it or have you heard good things about it? I've seen people catch fish on it. You have? Yeah. Yeah. I just haven't tried it myself. And so you got it, obviously, yeah, because you think, think that it's going to be effective, yeah. right? Yep. Israel is another great guy, Israel de la Cruz. He's another guy who donates to our Mexico thing, and you know. So we're we're you know during Christmas, we're in some impoverished area of Mexico, and we give out literally thousands that we accumulate throughout the year, all thanks to the Freeman Adventure family. Oh, that's great. I just get to play Santa Claus. <laughs> These guys do all the hard work and donate and everything else, so it's great stuff. Awesome. Scott Buchert is back. What is your favorite way to fish for? I'm guessing for bluefin, yellowtail, dorado, and tuna. Well, Scott threw some questions at you. <laughs> Let's start with bluefin. You kind of covered that, but yeah. go ahead. Just jigging, jigging for bluefin is is my, my favorite. Slow pitch or power? Uh, speed jigging. Speed jigging. Yeah. Yellowtail. Yellowtail. Oh, for sure, speed jigging. That's fun. A lot of fun. All right, Dorado. Dorado. Oh, uh, I'll, I'll throw a stick bait. Stick bait. Stick bait. Tuna, that's bluefin, right? Same thing. Or Unless he's talking about yellowfin yellow or something. Yellowfin, I like to use the little little jigs for... for, for AKA you know. the sack. Ginger. I actually like Marianne much better on <laughs> Gilligan's Island. Oh, right? okay. And I think okay. that's what he's talking about, right? No. <laughs> yeah, ginger does help oh, yeah, with seasickness. Yeah, that helps yeah. with seasickness. Steve Bermudez, have you ever used electric reels too fast? I hear they can be programmed. You're not using an electric reel, right? You're no, out there working hard. I don't, but I know some some people that do, and um, they actually have a jigging setting on the reel. So you can set it to? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, where it's it does the... Hey, call me when I get a bite, <laughs> right? Is that... I've seen people hook up on it, too. I, I guarantee. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, because then it'll, it'll retrieve, stop, retrieve, stop. Yeah, that's pretty... You know who's got a freaking electric reel? Oh, he does? Yeah, he does. <laughs> oh. He's got everything. <laughs> Steve Ennis, what's your favorite species to catch slow pitch jigging? And what is your least favorite? Also, do you have a species of fish you haven't caught that you want to besides favorite species on slow pitch? Favorite species? Yes. Yeah. Uh, like, I would say 
Probably lean cod fishing, maybe. Really? Yeah, okay. I like that. Your least nice. favorite. Like, maybe it's not productive for it, maybe. I'm guessing, like, would be your least favorite, right? Least favorite? No, uh, that's hard to say, because... Uh, I don't know. Okay. I'll yeah, you might through. not have an yeah. answer to that. <laughs> and do you have a species of fish that you haven't caught that you want to catch? What is something that you haven't caught that yeah. you... I, I can tell you what mine is. It'd be a swordfish. Mine... Swordfish is on my bucket list, but yeah. the one that I would like to catch before that is probably, I want a GT, a Trevally. Giant there, I've caught Trevally, not, yeah. a, not a giant, but I mean, in Fiji, I fished off oh, the beach man. and caught them, and I forget where else I caught them, but yeah, they're yeah. fun, man. They yeah, fight they hard. They do. Fishing a popper around yeah. the reefs. Yeah. Fun stuff, man. That'd be fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyone, anybody want to fish right now? We got a guy that wants to fish in Long Beach. Uh, <laughs> how about uh, here in San Pedro? We got Alex here. Jolene Thompson. Hi, guys. Great show tonight. Jolene will be here next week. Okay. Yeah, yes. so saw Lady that. Angler. Yeah, yeah. Accomplished with a colorful history. That should be really fun. Awesome. Phil, are you going to be at the Grunion Run tomorrow? Um, you know, I just walk out my front door in Surfside. I, I'm a, I go to bed early because I get up <laughs> at 4 every morning. Sometimes I, I might. Yeah, I might go out there. I, I should go out and take a peek because we've got that big, gorgeous... A super moon tomorrow yeah. night. So I'm excited about that. Jolene has a question for you. Now, next All week right. you have to return the favor <laughs> and ask Jolene. And Jolene, I'm so excited about you coming on the show. Next Tuesday is going to be awesome. It's going to be really fun. Got 70 likes, 30 more. Getting there. And you can go see your wife. <laughs> Other than that, you're, you're screwed. Do you ever change out the handle of a standard reel to a bigger one to improve the gear ratio? You ever do that? Yeah, I um, a lot of the reels that I buy, like for example, Jigging Master, it already comes with the oversized handle. Yeah. So it's perfect, you know. But I, I definitely would recommend people do that. I know there's gonna be more and more handles out there on the market. I know it's kind of limited in a yeah. way right now, but because of the supply chain or supply, and yeah. then you know, um, people are starting to get involved in uh, making handles for specific reels, so. It's going to be available, and yeah, I, I do recommend that. Excellent. It's great. Scott Buchert says his least favorite fish to catch uh, slow <laughs> pigeon is the blue, blue perch. perch. I, I wonder, wonder why. <laughs> so you know what's funny about Scott? He'll start telling me about these 200-pound bluefin, uh -huh. and he thinks I'm serious. I'll go, well, who, is there any blue perch? And he goes, <laughs> nobody wants to catch those stupid things. And I'm like, why? I could care less about these bluefin. I want blue perch. And so he's thinking, I'm, he's like, you're so stupid. You want to get... This, this goes on for a half hour between the two of us. So It's, it's funny that um, <laughs> there was, on my last trip, overnight on the new Loan. Oh, some, wait. Were you on that trip where they caught a perch on a kill patty? Yes. You were on that? I was on that. And Scott sent me that oh, because okay. he knew I'd get a kick out of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, did I, tell me about that. I'm serious. Yeah. He, what kind of perch was it? Blue perch on a kelp patty. So it was a big one too. Really? Yeah. Did they let it go back or did they kill it? I think he kept it. I think. Yeah. I don't remember. I think he Crapper did. snappers are good to eat. <laughs> so. That was pretty funny so though. So what? He threw a, it ate a sardine or something? I think it was. Probably. A, I think it was a live bait. Yeah. He was fishing a live bait. And he got a blue Dude, perch. I'm so excited that you were on the boat. <laughs> yeah, no, I seriously. I was on that trip. <laughs> I mean, how many freaking bluebirds do you catch on, on kelps? Yeah. And you were, where were you guys? We oh. were uh, 75 miles south. Yeah, fishing kelp patties. So that freaking bluebird is sitting on a kelp off Santo Tomas or something. And the wind blows it and it stays with the kelp. And then all of a sudden so it goes, weird. where in the hell am I, right? There's right. no there's no food around here. Right, right. That's funny. That is funny. And it's funny because Scott sent me that because he knew, you know, I joke about perch all the time with him. So <laughs> that's funny. All right, Jose wants to know, what is a good beginner SPJ rod? And what is the best way to fight a fish on uh, when you're slow yeah, pitching yeah. with a rod? So, we talked a little bit about that, but I think it's super important. A great yeah. question about Jose. So what's a good beginner rod? And, and how much do you have to spend? Um, Are you going to try to talk me into one of those $1,000 nah, deals? No, nah. no. Okay. Um, there's a lot of uh, um, slow pitch uh, rods available. Um, I know some like the Daiwa, what is it? The Daiwa Harrier. They make the Daiwa Harrier slow pitch. Um, who else? Uh, Shimano makes the one of their type, I want to say type J, I, I totally forgot, but. That's all right. Yeah, and they're 
affordable, affordable. I think it's the oh, it's the Shimano Talavera, I believe, slow pitch rod. I think those are only like a hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's under two hundred dollars. So cheap. So it's yeah. It's and, a, and quality. Yeah. Good enough. Yeah. 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 I I I picked it up at a local tackle shop to see, um, and yeah. It would be perfect for a beginner. Okay, and then Jose wants to know, how do you fight a fish? I think Jose asked that, right? What's the best way to fight it? Now, I said you got to remain perpendicular. Be honest with you, I'd have to go look up perpendicular again. <laughs> you know, I forget what that means. I've yeah. flunked geometry. So, so it's just like staying like this, yep, right? Yep. You, um, you're, you're never going too high. You're always like, I would say... You you're just, facing straight out to sea, right? Yeah. And your rod yeah. is bent. And it's just going to be... You're never turning sideways nah, or anything like that. Nah. Why? What, what happens when you do that? No, um, most of the time it's... The, the rod is working for you when yeah, you're that way, yeah, right? Yeah. And killing and putting pressure on the fish. Putting pressure on yeah. the fish. But remember that you're using the drag mm. pressure from your reel to, to bring them in. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Yep. 25 more likes and you're <laughs> out of here and then i'm gonna make it 150 so yeah no i wouldn't do that to you israel just fished with <clears throat> excuse me jolene's brother last week on the old glory jolene you've got fans fishing with your family members now uh brandon yeah chappy is the greatest i haven't seen him this year yet is he gotta visit clay and the crew soon okay very good Samuel De La Torre wants to know any opinions on ocean legacy yes. rods. Yeah. I hope you like them. Yeah, I don't want the guy. To they they are good rods. Are Very they? good rods. Yeah. Are they expensive? Actually, um, they uh, have some uh, introduction, like introductory uh, slow pitch uh, rods available at yeah. a, at a good price point too. So that's that's a good a good one. Uh, they make vertical jigging rods. They make popping rods as well. Um, yeah, I got to check out their whole line because the owner of Ocean's Legacy is in town right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. So I got Where to meet. Where is he meet... from? He's from Australia. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So I got to meet him and then uh, talk. Was to he him. a nice guy? A very nice guy. Yeah. yeah. So he's, uh, yeah, he has his stuff is is good. All right, very Ocean's good. Legacy. There you are, Sam. Um, Phil, it would be smart to fish where the grunion runs spawn the night before a run. Hey, uh, so I have a lot of experience at that fishing mm -hmm. grunion run. So now you can actually take grunion. You know, they have okay. observation only. We frickin', I mean, not all the time, but most of the time during the grunion run, you got an ample supply of bait. Right, right. It's so cool. So you walk out there with a hook, <laughs> you pin a bait on. There, you know, there's millions of these things. Yeah. We have frickin' wailed on these big yellowfin croaker. Bob. A uh, guy that I fish with a lot, he caught like a 40-pound leopard one night, big leopard That's shark. Big he was actually fishing with a lucky craft lure. Oh. And, and actually, I wasn't even down there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was in bed sleeping because I get up early. And all of a sudden, I hear the <laughs> pounding on the door and oh, you take a photo of me. And I'm like, what the hell is going on out there? <laughs> and I go out and there's this maniac holding this giant bloody leopard shark. And I'm like... You know, trying to wake up and get, you know, where am I? What is that? I go, oh, shoot, man. That's a cool that's fish. Cool. So I shot, I should put that up next week. <laughs> Beautiful fish. Awesome. But you are so right about that. I mean, during grunion runs, you can catch a lot of fish. You'll see fish flop around in the surf. You'll see them boil. Mm -hmm. it's really, have you been to a grunion run? Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. It's an exciting thing to bring kids to. Yeah, it is. And it's a good family, family event. It totally is. I will say, however, many of those nights it's cold and it's windy. And like about a half hour into it, I'm like, I'm freaking <laughs> over and, this. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm out of here. Yeah. So I never, ever go. Like if the run is midnight or 10 to midnight, mm -hmm. you don't see me out there until 11. Because that first hour sucks all the time. <laughs> I'm telling you. It really does. And then so I go out there, give it to 11 to 11.30, and I bail. Okay. My kids, though, one night, we, we were like down there for an hour. And I go, I'm done, boys. I'm done. And this was recently. You know, these kids are 30. And, and so they're like, oh, just give it a second longer, Dad. And then all of a sudden, two, mm -hmm. three, <laughs> nice. hundreds, thousands. So yeah. it's pretty cool. So you that's don't want to cool. bail too early. Yeah. That's for sure. All right, Matthew Tamayo. Oh, Matthew. James is the man. <laughs> Regarding a Megalodon 569 6 10, 
What's your recommendation for length for being able to rail the rod? Yeah. Good question. What's up, Matt? Matthew. Yeah. Um, you like this guy, Matt? Yeah. Is he a nice guy? Yes, very Is he nice a big guy. guy too? No. Oh, okay. Not a, not bodyguard material. <laughs> Who's that? Big Chino, somebody, right? Big Chino, Jeff. Yeah, Big Chino. Okay, he's the yeah. he's my guy. So yeah. uh, Matthew, the the foregrip length is, should be about eight inches. That would be perfect. So you could be able to rail as well. Excellent. You need to. Yep. Twenty five more likes for this poor man. <laughs> Do you want to see your wife tonight? Yeah. You're dying to see her, right? You're going to go, tra you don't have to translate for her. She speaks no. English, yeah. right? Yeah, I got to, you know, <laughs> Tom Cruise de ho, blah, 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 blah. I like doing it, though. It's fun. It's pretty cool. All right. Um, Kai Fish Killer, have you noticed the reels need more maintenance due to higher drag pressures fishing slow pitch? Is that true? Is that is that uh, a phenomenon you've run up against? No, not yet. But I'm pretty sure, especially if you hook a lot of big fish, I'm sure it's, it'll, it'll wear out your drag a little bit, but you know, there, there's a lot of good uh, drags now nowadays, so yeah. it should be okay. Sam met with a guy from Australia with the Ocean's Legacies oh, Rods. He? He's thinking on ordering a bunch. He okay. liked what he saw. Do you agree? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do hey, too. Sam, uh, tell that guy, by the way, that he was all over this podcast and he ought to leave one of those for me. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, he doesn't have to do that. Not kidding. All right, Bobby Stevenson, have you heard of Goofish Rods? Yeah. For slow pitching, and if so, what's your opinion on them? Goo fish. Yeah, goo fish. That's yeah, where's that out of? Uh, Where are those manufactured? I'm not sure. I want to say China, but I know they're available on Amazon, I want to say. Yeah. But uh, yeah, those, those are good rods. Are um, they? I, I, when they first came out, I even bought one to try out, and uh, they're made out of solid no uh, nano, so they're really indestructible, <clears throat> and yeah. They're really good. They're 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 really good rods too. So it sounds like there's a lot of great products out there. There are. Yeah. There are. Especially now, with um, slow pitch being really popular in uh, Southern California. Yeah. There's a lot of lot out there. So if I walk on whatever boat in San Diego, let's take the New Loan, mm -hmm. and I grab ten guys, mm -hmm. and I pull them off, and I say, "How many of you know what slow pitching is and how to do it? How many of those guys? I'm obviously you don't know the answer, but." How many of those guys are going to say, oh, is I would it say one, three, ten? I would say probably, I would say three or four maybe. Okay. Yeah. I but maybe not the kind of knowledge that the Freeman Adventures family has now, thanks to you, because <laughs> we've delved into this in yeah. great detail. Yeah. And we're still not finished. Don't think you're out of here. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question. Yes. You ready? Yeah. How many, how much time have we been on this podcast? How much time? Yeah. How, how long? I don't even been? know. Yeah. Just take a guess. How long have we been talking? An hour? Maybe. Oh my God, you're only off by one hour. Two hours. Two hours? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, when you're talking to Phil Friedman, time just flies by. Wow. You know why? Because you can't wait to get out of here, <laughs> right? Yeah, I know. You don't have to say it. All right, uh, all right. Sam's going to order a bunch, and he's going to get me a free one, or I'm never going to mention those guys <laughs> again on this show. Just kidding. Brandon, uh, can you do any slow pitch jigging in the harbor? That's a yeah, good question. That is. Or is that really something for offshore and islands? Curious if anyone does it. There, there are. Have you ever um, done it in the harbor? Pitching that. And uh, Newport Harbor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, slow pitching with little jigs like <clears throat> twenty gram, forty gram jigs. Yeah, I've got calicos, spotties. Yeah, you could. Because that Newport Harbor is man. There's some good fishing in yeah, there. Yeah, there is. They, yeah. they can be, but. And I, here too. I mean, down here in uh, in Huntington yeah, Beach. Huntington yeah, Beach that's pretty good too. Yeah. And then um, I know that there's guys in San Diego that do it for sure. I've seen I've seen them uh, slow pitch jig um, in the harbors. Yeah. All right. Here's the dumb question of the night. One of them. Can you slow pitch in the surf? No. Can you surf fish? Can you toss that out and work it? Yeah, you could. Really? I've seen I've seen oh, the I'd guys like to in Japan um, do surf surf jigging. Yeah. Yeah. So there, some of them are even casting off boiler rocks and stuff like that, or. Um, what do you call the the break wall? Jetties, yeah, or, jetties yeah. and stuff. Yeah, and but James, you know, because like if I throw a chrome crocodile, mm -hmm. uh, those yellowfin croaker eat that full freaking oh, yeah. speed. They bite it good, and sometimes in the winter time, you use a heavier lure. You let it hit the bottom because they're not as active, mm -hmm. and you just drag it across the bottom, and you get bit. So I bet if you had a small enough jig, yeah. do they make I them? Should give, yeah, 
I got some in my in my box. I'll Actually, try it. Yeah. You, do you have them here tonight? No, I don't. Okay. Well, but we're not going to let you go home. I'll, I'll send some to you. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, well, we're going to get together and do yeah. our, you know. Okay. Yeah. We'll do a surf fishing one too. All right. You come over I there. I want to give catch... it a try too because yeah. that's something that I want to try. Yeah. Is, um... Should we invite Alex? Yeah. Oh come on! <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> So it's pretty versatile. You can use it surf fishing. You can use it in the harbors and bays. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That sounds awesome. I would love to try that surf fishing yeah, for that, sure. Yeah, that's, that's something I want to try too. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's just cover a couple other things and then maybe 77 likes. You know I'm not going to hold you to that. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? We're winding down, my friends. We've kept James Two hours, a fantastic job awesome, you are doing. And <laughs> to be honest, you were a little nervous at the beginning yeah, of this. Now, was very... and, and now, how do you feel? I'm good. Like <laughs> I want to get out of here. <laughs> two hours is enough. <laughs> so, um, if you're you're into fishing, but you've never done the slow pitch, give your best pitch to that guy. You should do it. Why should a person try this? It's... What What is the joy that you derive from this type of fishing? It's just uh, fun, fun technique to learn and um, yeah it's just you're always learning something new um, slow pitch jigging what yeah. is the most important thing to know about slow pitch jigging? is it the gear you buy is it the technique is it all of that stuff is it is it adapting and trying new different techniques while you're out there yeah I think I think that's that's one way but um, I think I think having the right setup at least to start with and messing around with it uh, with various techniques afterwards. That's yeah. So I, I would say probably your your setup. Yeah, yeah? that's really important. Yeah. Hey Alex, is Tino Valentine out there? Have you seen him? Yeah. He is. Uh, you know who that is? Yeah. Go out there and just ask if Tino's around. And if he wants to come in here and say something for five minutes before we wind up, great. If he's busy, don't worry about it. It'd be fun to have yeah. him. Have, do, you, do you know Tino? Uh, no, I've never met him, but I I know he's. He he's funny. With, he's yeah. a great guy. Yeah. Man, we're getting so close to 100. Please, please, more <laughs> likes, and we'll be all finished. Look at these fish on the Spirit of Adventure, James. Yeah, beautiful, awesome great trip. fish, huh? Yeah. And and this guy Matt with his two kids, and the one boy gets uh, it was <laughs> Ryan had three over 100, and then Brad, his other son, gets two just under 200. Man, that's ridiculous. That's awesome. That is that's great. That's a great fishing. trip. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Dave Maestro, I like what Sam at Island Tackle is doing to get some great rods for um, slow pitch jigging and speed jigging. Sam's all over it, man. Yeah. You, you you have not met him. You uh, got yeah, yeah, him. I did yeah. meet him at, at a shop. Ah, okay, don't bug him. Yeah. Um, uh, he's a super good yeah, guy. Super yeah, super nice guy. And Sam, you didn't answer the question. Are we doing the seminar with James at your place, or are we doing it over at Shulbs in Torrance? You've got to come up with, well, we can talk tomorrow or whenever I see you. James, I think unless somebody else has a question out there, uh, do you want to give away one more jig to a questioner? You want me to pick somebody? Yeah, sure. No, I don't want to do that because I, you, you pick somebody. <laughs> I pick someone? Yeah. On that list, do you want them to, to go down a little bit so you can see more names? Hey, uh, James, do you own a custom wrapped uh, slow Slow-pitch. pitch rod um, for your liking? I do have one. That what is it? I actually custom one of the Phoenix Titan slow pitch rods. Yeah. Yeah. You like that? Yeah, that was, that was, that's one of the, that I use. Uh -huh. I use the, the light model. Mm -hmm. And you said your next fishing adventure is when and where? The end of the month. Um, I'm on the three day on the pack clean. Boy, I'm telling you, those, <laughs> uh, I'm hoping those guys get on a kelp loaded with blue perch for you. <laughs> I mean, come on. What could be better? Right. Freaking blue perch. And Scott, you know, Scott, I have to admit, Scott Buchert, he does a lot of the research for me because he's into it. So he mm -hmm. calls me up and, you know, sometimes I go, I don't have a pen and paper. And he goes, well, get one. <laughs> he's, so then he gave me this and they had one, I thought he said like oceanic perch or some <laughs> weird thing. And I go, what? And he goes, yeah, that's what they got in their account. Yeah. And I go, well, that's weird. And you were there. I was on it. Yep. That's freaking awesome. Yep. One more time. How can we get some of your jigs? How can we learn more? You and I are going to do some instructional videos. Because, I mean, this just opens the door up yeah. to more questions. Although you have been so informative and so great, James. Yeah. You've been 
not a surprise because when I mentioned you were going to be on, so many people said, man, this guy's the guy. But if people want to get in, in, in touch and buy some of your product, how can they do that? Yeah, um, you guys can reach out to, to me on uh, the West Coast Jiggers uh, IG. Or um, I also have a um, Facebook group, West Coast Jiggers. So you could, you could find me there. You could, if you guys have any questions, you guys can always chi chime in on there on those two platforms. Two more questions have just come yeah. in, and we never end the show <laughs> when there's a question up All right. there. 79 likes. I know you're ready to go. Uh, James, how much would it be to get into the slow pitch fishing of the sport? Is there any affordable options for new people? So if you, if you want to buy some jigs, a rod, and a reel, what's it going to cost? You know, on the minimum end. Is 500 bucks or? I would say with what's out there right now, you probably could do like 400 bucks. Really? Yeah. So you can have some jigs, yeah. a rod, and a reel? Yeah. That's pretty yeah, good. 400. And you know, it, um, there's always, you, if you have like a, a bait casting type of reel, like a Tranks 400, like those, those will get the job done too. Calcutta 300, things like that. Bait casting size, yeah. All good. right, very good. Uh, Tony Gonzalez, and this question, Tony was asked and answered, but we're gonna answer it again for you. James, what do you think about attaching glow sticks? Well, actually no, glow sticks are different. Uh, a lot brighter than the paint on the jigs. And once again, maybe, right? Because it's visibility? Yeah. Um, do you think it might screw up the action of the jig or it anything? Might, it yeah. might. Yeah. That's the downside. Yeah. Yeah. It probably would be. But um, the glow paint on, on most jigs, they're, they're really good. Yeah. yeah. You light them up yep. and they stay lit for yep. a while. Yep. How, long do, how, how often do you have to recharge them? Um, I don't know. Some, some can last for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I've seen some last that long, but... Yeah, they probably maybe maybe a couple of drops you can get get away with. Okay, yeah. very good, very good. All right, um, I think we're done. All right. Tomorrow morning, you'll see me. I'll be up bright and early. We'll have a morning briefing for you all, and Sean Roberts will be part of that show because Sean had that. Yeah, but not yet. Just hang on a second. Um, he was going to shut the show off. Did you see that? Yeah. I'm, I'm right in the middle of my saying goodbye and how much I love everybody. Let me do that. So I, I truly want to thank you all, but I want to turn to my attention to this gentleman right here, James. Yes. What a pleasure to meet you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Your you knowledge is out, yeah. out of control. Yeah. Everybody enjoyed it. Yeah. You had so many questions, so many people, and almost 100 likes. We're going to let you see your wife anyway <laughs> tonight, right? right. Thank you so much, yeah, James. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right. Appreciate it. And you'll see more of James because I'm not kidding around about the instructional videos. We'll get Sam involved in it. And we'll all put together some instructional stuff to help you move along in this great new way to fish. All right. For Alex, who I like to kid with. Come on out, Alex. <laughs> Give me a hug. There we are. For Alex, for James, and yours truly, thank you so much. You, you can wave goodbye, Alex. Bye. James, <laughs> thanks everybody. Really appreciate <laughs> it. You. See you tomorrow morning for the morning briefing. Take care, everybody.